<laughs> I'm sure it's just a roll 20 thing. Probably gonna reload again because I'm changing some settings here. Yeah, I don't know what it is with Firefox, man, but it's like, it's, uh, it's a bit of a bastard, isn't it? Yeah, my CPU is working pretty hard. Well, mm -hmm. all right, so, uh, Kyle, let's do some skill checks. All right. And Lee, and Lee, I don't think you got any skill checks last session. Oh, look, I don't believe I did either, man. I'll, I'll take yeah. a look, but I, I, think I don't you think I did. made some library use rolls, as far as I can remember. Yep. He was the only one that nailed it. And I think Tom may have, too, once or twice, but I know. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me know when you use a red. Go ahead. All right. So fighting brawl. We're gonna start with that one. And let me here. Okay. Well, that sucks. Oh wow, I was close, but no cigar. I'll uncheck that. Lee, right. you can you Lee, you can make a check for luck. I think right. it's, what, 35? So you need to get over 35 in order to increase luck by 1d10. Same same for you, Kyle. Okay. Include, include that in your checks. I'll go ahead and do that. Now, where is luck? Oh, there it is. Okay, I see it. I'm just reloading this Firefox page now, Hooray! guys. Hooray! I failed big time. Now what do I do? For luck? Yep, I failed you, my luck. With yeah, you, so you go did. ahead and... Increase it uh, by one d ten. Okay. <clears throat> All right, three. Wahoo. Okay. Now I'm gonna roll for a library use. Yay! All right, that's a 1d10 as well. Yes. Good rolling, man. Oh, uh, you know, I probably did. Um, I don't think I checked it, but we I know I made my um, 1911 because uh, I shot near Lothotep in the head. Did we roll for that stuff afterwards? I don't think we have since then. You probably just forgot to check it in all the excitement. It was pretty exciting. Okay, I'm going to roll for that <laughs> it one. It was. Now. Yay! Wow, nice. Good, you done rolling? Okay, Abuelo's not doing that. Yes, I am finished. Yeah, to... Kyle, Kyle's camera's going in and out of me, too, for some reason. Or 
I think Lisa's fine. Check your, uh, check your USB hub or your camera, maybe, Kyle. Do See I know? The connection in. Bring your camera back in, like unplug it, plug it back in. It's it's built into the um. Top, okay. I'm sorry. Are, are you using Firefox, Kyle? I am. It might be my connection, too. Could be. Yeah, our connection here sucks. It's in and out and... Huh? Oh. Uh, yeah. I failed. I, I could do that. Yay! Fail? Yeah, that's a fail. Awesome. Generally, if you, if you don't have any bonus dice or penalty dice, you're looking at the zero row. So, yeah, you failed. Cool. It's not too hard to fail a 35. So increase the 35 by 1d10. So you're going to be a little bit more lucky than you started out. I guess luck's kind of like a thing. Like if you don't use it, you know, it just gets better and better and better until you do. I'll have to remember to let Tom do his skill checks next time too. Okay, I changed right. to, let's see, I changed our network connection here. Let me see if this works. Let me reload. Maybe this one will be better. Yeah, it's working so far. All right, so next order of business. Um, Lee, I think we should have a name for the yacht. Let's come up with a name, a cool name for the yacht. What do you say? Hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Uh, let's see here. It says whoremonger. No, um, <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Hmm. While you're thinking oh. of that, um, Sparky uh, learns the Elder Sign spell. Very good. <laughs> but I believe you guys have a shield with an elder sign on it. You also have one of the star stones. Uh, so it's going to be up to you if you want to use elder sign. Um, I double checked, and uh, actually, um, in the in the old rules, it was two two power. You have to sacrifice to cast elder sign, which translates to ten power. Uh, two times five is ten, so. If you want to use Elder Sign to uh, enchant the sign, you'll have to use 10 permanent power to do that. Boom. Yeah. But but that's it, with... It's good powder, to have. Powder of Ibn Ghazi, right? With, like, because yeah. the, one, the one we learned from the... Dang, I can't remember the name of the book. But Yes, it's from the Somerset Tablets. If, yeah, if, you're, but, if you're able to create that special oil which you guys need to learn the powder of Ibn Gabzi spell to do, um, you can cast it without any power sacrifice, which is very nice. Um, the Necronomicon, the Greek version anyway, does contain the that spell, the powder of Ibn Gabzi. So that's good. Um, so what about the... Uh, what, what's the version we talked them into giving us? Is the Latin... It's a Latin, Latin version. version, and you can assume that you know it's probably going to have a lot of the same spells. Uh, okay. Yeah. The so. Greek, Greek version. Uh, tell um, Tom to keep a or Doctor Van Helsing. Cats are out. Yeah. Let's take, let's take a look at it here just to make sure. Uh, so. Yes, it says through use of a special oil as specified in the Somerset tablets, the spell can be cast using nine magic points instead of two power. So there you go. And I already put Marshall Sparks as knowing that spell. Um, so as we, as I said, Van Helsing is working on skimming the Latin version of the Necronomicon. 
It's going to take him four day, about four days to do that. And before or after that, uh, he's also working on learning the Command the Trees spell from Nameless Cults, uh, which is going to take him four weeks. I've also determined that it would probably be best um, to go by the rules on this and only allow one investigator at a time to study or read one book at a time. Um, I think it was a special case with the Greek Necronomicon because nobody knew Greek except for the ambassador. Um, but from here on out, um, one investigator per book, basically, as it's um, being read or skimmed. You guys have a lot of books to choose from. And we're going to talk a little bit about that here in a minute. Okay. Um, that also makes sense. To, it does make sense. But like I said, I think I was just making a... It was kind of a special case with the, the Greek. I was kind of throwing you guys a bone on that. Because <clears throat> I know that Tom really wanted to read it. Um, I, I, think, I think if it was like like a, a group of elderly people in front of Dr. Van Helsing, he would have steam rollered them to get to the book. Get out of my way. Right, right. <laughs> Dude, he would have cast them off the side of a cliff. He would have. <laughs> he would have, actually, can we bring up his picture, please? Uh, sure. <laughs> it's comforting. Yeah. <laughs> there he is in all his glory. Is he looking at you? Who knows? I mean, I would argue he could probably read two texts. Yeah. <laughs> One eye is looking at the Necronomicon. Hold, hold that's what's second, going guys. on there. Yeah, go ahead. I, I got a... There's a, a cat that's escaped the apartment. I got to put it back. All right. Hey, Stuart, don't let it stray too far from the lair. I've been having cat problems lately myself. Driving like nuts. your... Problems or foreign cat problems? The thing is here, man, it got so cold that our cats are kind of out outdoor, indoor cats. Sure. They're used, they're used, they spend like 99% of their time outside, but being so cold, they won't go out there. So they've been stuck in the house for like the last two or three weeks, and they're driving me nuts. Okay. <clears throat> Back. All right. Next order of business. Alessio. You have a notarized letter from Torrance Hancock, Torrance Jacob Hancock, which gives you, Alessio, uh, legal permissions, say, um, to allow you access to any of the Hancock's properties in Scotland, uh, like Hancock's uh, house, uh, things like that. It basically makes you a legal representative of uh, Torrance Hancock, okay? And you may you may need that at some point if you were if you are to travel to to Canich, uh, to do any kind of investigations there. Um, you know, the lo local law enforcement and such may require to see some kind of uh, legal notice. You know, that gives you sort of legal representation for sure certain things that you may want to do while you're there. Uh, so you have a, yeah, so you have a notarized letter uh, that, that gives you legal permissions uh, for such. It's just the area, right, in Scotland where this yes. is all going on. Yes. Um, you know, because Hancock has disappeared. Uh, so presumably, you know, one of the things you would want to do while you're there is, is get access to his property. Um, and this letter would allow you to do that if you come across any kind of barriers um, having to do with the law, the, the local law enforcement or whatever. The, the letter would show that you have you are a legal representative of Jacob Hancock. Of course we are. Or mm -hmm. is. So just real quick, I wanted to go over some of the books, book information you guys have. And, and the list is getting bigger and bigger. Um, so we've already determined the doctors uh, skimming the, the Latin Necronomicon. You guys also possess a copy of a book called Cthulhu in the Necronomicon. 
um, which just uh, doing some kind of precursory uh, investigations, you find that uh, it's written by a man named Shrewsbury, and it's a man, it's a handwritten manuscript. And the book begins with the Necronomicon's numerous references to a monstrous water elemental or god called Cthulhu. Uh, and beginning from here, Shrewsbury sets off on a journey through the mythology and folklore around the world having to do with this monstrous water god or whatever. Okay. Um, Cultus des Gulas. The book alleges the widespread existence of necromancy and necrophilia in France around the turn of the century. And you guys learned a little bit about that from the Nameless Cults. Uh, one of the chapters of Nameless Cults goes into uh, these necromantic cults in France. There is the Revelations of Glocky, which Ooh. consists of nine volumes standard published version of the work is a nine volume folio size edition printed in Liverpool in 1865 and the volumes detail the prophecies, wisdom and commands bestowed upon Glocky's cult with a special concentration on the strange happenings in the Severn River Valley, which is in England and each book covers a different subject and of course to learn more about these you're going to have to skim them okay. I'm just kind of giving you some a basic overview of what, what's in them um, and I think that's it. The Cultus de Skoulis, Cthulhu and the Necronomicon, and Revelations of Glocky are three books that you haven't really skimmed or anything yet. Um, everything else, I think you have. The uh, Greek ne Necronomicon, you guys know what spells are in there. They're all listed here. Um... There's a lot of spells in there. Um, also, in the very bottom in the comments, I put the first few pages of the Necronomicon. I don't know if you guys have read that, but maybe sometime if you get a chance, go and check that out. The comments? Yeah, if you scroll down in the window first, there. The first few pages of the Necronomicon. Yeah, it this says, is the testimony. Of all that I've seen and all that I have learned in those years that I have possessed the three seals of the black goat, etc., etc., etc. It's pretty interesting. I think I did read that. Yeah, I put it in Discord a while back. Yeah, I, uh, I'm pretty sure I did read it then. The hmm. spell list? The spell list on this book? Yeah. Man. Yeah, I know. And Dang. you can... And it's probably safe safe to assume that the Latin version is similar. There's one spell that's catching my attention. Yeah, what's that? What is it? Bless blade. Bless bless blade. Plus blade. One of the other ones seem to be kind of um, possibly dangerous. A couple that seem to be benign or helpful, that's definitely one of them. I'm like, oh, that's okay. That could be actually helpful. Yeah, and the Vorish sign is another one. The Vorish sign is a spell um, which increases your, your chances of casting other spells, basically. Com totally benign. There's, there's, I don't think there's any sanity loss or anything for it. But We know the candle communication spell, right? Mm. We get that in another... I don't think anybody's learned it yet. Okay. I don't think. No, definitely not. I'd have it on the list if you did. I mean, so far, if you look at the spells and tomes index, the spells are listed underneath the books down here. And, and these are spells that you guys have, have learned. There's Resurrection, Enchant Gain, Fate, Gate Boxes, Banished, Dark Child, Command the Trees, uh, which I think Yusuf is new, uh, Doctor's Learning, Commandary Travelers, Elder Sign, and Enchant Whistle. As far as I know, I think those are the only spells that you guys have actually learned. Um, lastly, I just wanted to go over the, the contents of the safe, just in a, in a general way. And uh, so l looking at I'm looking at Dr. Van Helsing's character sheet because he's got a pretty, I've got a pretty good list I put in his sheet here of some stuff. 
<coughs> just so, just to kind of remind ourselves what, what you guys have. Um, Van Helsing has the book uh, or the small folio that con contains the Enchant Gate Boxes spell. Um, also a key ring from the underground guard room at, at the Boston Lodge. Also the key to the underground library. Um, the letter to Carol Stanford from Duncan McBain. And of course, all the books we just mentioned, all the books on the list are in the safe. Um, golden medallions from the Honduras or from Mondor in the dreamlands, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, where's the player journal? Dun, dun, dun. Oh, of course, uh, the Somerset tablets, along with all of uh, Percy Fawcett, Eusephus Braun, and John and Professor Farnsworth's notes, um, mostly having to do with the banished dark, dark child spell and the special version of the Elder Signs spell. Um, along with the Legends and Myths of Avalon book. And is that on the list? I believe it is. Mm, it's not. I need to put that on there. You might want to consider making um, copies of, like, all the player character notes, like Yusufus and, you know, about the Dark the, the all that stuff, and actually over to Miskatonic University. That kind of crossed my mind, you know, especially if you guys for, are for documentation. Yeah. And, and you also might also want to consider like, I mean, this is quite a little library that you guys have. Uh, it already. Is. Well, I, I think well Kyle, is. Kyle mentioned last time you mentioned last time, man, about possibly leaving some of these at, at Miskatonic. Um, really good idea or leaving them somewhere secure. I mean, I think Tom's probably going to want to carry the <laughs> in the Latin yeah, copy I, with him, but yeah, to haul all these books around. I with think, us, yeah, you know? with the the Latin, yeah, the the Greek and the Latin copies are coming because then you know the Greek. Um, I, I wasn't convinced, but then when we talked about like the tables and charts that aren't in the other one, you know, like we could cross reference and get a lot done, or you know, Van Helsing could. But some of the other stuff, I mean, I'm like just to, you know, kick that horse again. Um, I, I'm in favor of doing that because this, it's safe and they know us and we could we could come back and get some of this stuff as opposed to sunk. It turns into a sunken treasure, or gets ripped from us or whatever, you know. I mean, yeah. I'd like to leave. I'd like to leave the uh, the Necronomicon in the other book here too, but I know that's not going to happen. So. No, you'd yeah, have to leave. Uh, we can do that. We just have to leave Van Helsing. Right, and that's not so, happening. So, yeah, but problem. Yeah, that's kind of what I want. It's kind of the reason I wanted to bring it up because, you know, toting around this safe everywhere you guys go, I mean, it's it's a little unwieldy, you know, to throw it in the back of the truck and keep it back there. And, and, and if you guys want to hang on to this stuff, you may want to come up with some kind of plan to stash it, you know? I mean, another okay. thing. Another thing to do would be to actually put it into a very secure, you know, bank. You know, mm -hmm. Sparky, you're you're not really do. Someone someone should put it somewhere and, and make sure the other party members have access to it. You know, basically make a list of people who have access to the key. But See, we, we could we could store it somewhere. You know. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I like our chances of coming back to it at Miskatonic as opposed to other places. You know, it's kind of like, oh, all right, we're going to leave Edgar Casey at this, you know, Brattleboro retreat and, you know, he escapes. There's a couple, well, there's a couple ways to look at Who it. Who knew? You know, I mean, it's to look at it. I mean, you know, Miskatonic is a hot spot of sorts, right? Known for having other tomes, man. Yeah, not not like widely known, but yeah, 
right. for, for for those in the know with any kind of mythos knowledge or something they you know they may know that they they hold certain uh, artifacts and books you could somewhere you know put a elder sign on top of them you know, yeah, and, and like as that. of you know, as of a couple of days ago, you guys are, seem to be on pretty good terms with uh, Henry Armitage, who's in, generally in charge of the you know collection. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a problem, and, and like I said, maybe possibly making a copy, a complete copy of the, the other, um, use of this and all that stuff, and all you know, basically that for their own collection. Yeah, and that could take a little time too. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm all for I'm all for leaving a, a good part of the books uh, at Miskatonic, you know. Okay, well then I think the question becomes: at Miskatonic, or do we want to relocate it to some other place? Uh, I guess my question would be, and I guess we could talk to Armitage if you want to do a little side thing here as far as, yeah, as far as, you know, you know, we're, our, our concerns are obviously about the last time we met, you know, there's, yeah, these are dangerous tomes. Um, the, the yacht, the yacht does have a safe on it. You know, that, that's, could be an option. I mean, I don't know how you get, how you feel about that, but well, Okay, so how about you? You don't like the idea of a bank, Kyle? That's just too general. I mean, I huh? A bank? We could do that. I mean, I, I you know, I think that. Uh, I, I mean, I think there's some number of things we like. Maybe we want like at least one gold medallion with us. We definitely want the elder sign with us. You know. Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. A, a selection I, I, of stuff we need to take. If we're absolutely. headed to Europe, I think it would be worthwhile to bring some of the books that are related to that geographic region with us. You know, so if we like, so maybe we bring the cultist ghouls with us, you know, because. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's not really an issue to to bring Maybe. this stuff with you. It's just to carry it around in a safe is kind of the issue, you know. Um, maybe you can find, find something maybe a little a, a lighter, you know, like a like a trunk or something like a. Yeah, we could we know. could have a strong box like a strong box there trunk. You, go. you know, yeah. um, that would be you know basically like a custom, a steamer, you know, like a steam trunk. Mm -hmm. Kind of like my wardrobe trunk, except the sit-down version, you know? Yeah, strong box. Yeah. I still don't think, though, that we, we need to take all of them with us, because some of the books... But yeah, I agree with you, Kyle. Maybe take a couple that are specific to Europe. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to kind of clarify how you guys want to tote this stuff around with you. I'm, I've just been assuming that it's kind of just in the trunk of the car or the back of the pickup the whole time you guys are, you know, driving around and shit. <laughs> It's just something I kind of need to know, you know. At our convenience. Mm -hmm. I rolled to the back of the car and I grabbed the books out. All right. Um, all right, dude. Well, I think if we're going to make any big decisions on stash and stuff, I definitely want the doctor's input. So let's do everything in a strong box for now. Okay. And then when he rejoins us, yeah, um, we can make some calls there, you know. You might want to build like a uh, living room fort out of all the books or something like that, but <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, so it is August 9th, 1924, Saturday. Um, and I'm, some of you guys have returned to Boston from Arkham, Massachusetts. Is that right? Yes. Okay, where are you staying in Boston? In the ashes of the Crown and Shield Manor. Crown and Shield. <laughs> yeah. In some lunch now. Um, well, does a, uh, I mean, Marshall would have some contacts there. 
So I'll try to uh, so run a house for us like you did before. And find a uh, maybe somebody who's vacationing and say, well, stop by and use your place. Okay. Make sure everything's tidy and everything's good. Okay, so like maybe a uh, a love interest of Marshall's. Something yes, like that. exactly. Lovey, I'm stopping by. All right. Um, so you look up uh, old Mary Lou, Mary Lou Harris. Um, she's also a professional athlete, tennis player. Mm, you met her on like tour. Those athletic girls. No, you met her on a European tour a couple years ago. And uh, you show up to her house, and uh, her mother answers the door. And uh, she recognizes you. And she seems a little distraught. I lost you for a second or two there. Sorry, Sean. Yeah, her, her mother answers the door of her, of her house in Boston, Mary Lou's house. Her, mother's an her mother answers the door. She seems a little distraught. She recognizes you, Sparky. Um, and, and she's like, uh, and she says, thank God. Come in, come in. And she invites you in. And uh, she says that Mary Lou um, has been missing um, for a couple of weeks, about 10 days um, oh, or my. so. Um, she just, she was, uh, you know, she went to the club uh, Sunday afternoon a couple of weeks ago, and, and nobody has seen her since. And I'm just wondering if, if you know what may have happened to her. Has she contacted you, or have you talked to her? I have not. Um, well, this is uh, this is very concerning. Can you tell me maybe uh, a little bit about you know what she was doing the days prior to her disappearance? Well, she was just she was preparing for the fall tour, um, spending time with her friends, um, and really no no clue um, as to what may have happened to her. She didn't say anything to me. Um, she just seems to have fallen off the face of the earth. She cries, starts crying. I I, uh, I I hold her hand and tell her, they're there now. We'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll see what we can do to find Mary Lou. Uh, does, I'm sure does I'm she, positive she'll turn up. Does she live here? She must yes. live with her mom. She, yep. Does she have a room here? Well, this is this is her her home. It's her. It's Mary Lou's house, and uh, yeah, I, I her, asked, her mother her mother lives with her. Yes. I asked the mom, "Would you mind if uh, if I took a look around in her room, and you know, I introduce her to Alessio, you know?" Mm-hmm. And she says, no, absolutely, Sparky. I'm sorry about your troubles. Sorry about your troubles. She says, uh, she tells you that, you know, the police have been notified, uh, but they haven't been able to find any trace um, of what may have happened to her. And it's it's been, you know, 10 days, more than 10 days since she went missing. Okay. And of course it occurs to you, you know, you know what happens when people go missing in Boston. They've been hanging out with the word of the Instead silver of the twilight. Silver twilight, yeah. They end up in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> right. They end up in the birthing <laughs> chamber, and then consequently, yeah, just, if yeah. we can save them, they end up at Brattleboro. So, so of course, it would be concerning to you right away. You know, you you would think to yourself, like, you know, did they? Of course, it's totally plausible that these guys, Pollard and. John Scott and these guys, you know, may have made the connection uh, that Marshall Sparks had become involved in this, uh, being a relative of Jacob Cronenshields. They knew all about Jacob, and uh, perhaps they went out looking for uh, some leverage, uh, per se. Hmm. It's not beyond the realm of possibility, anyway. You know, 
Uh, but it's unusual for someone like Mary Lou, who's, you know, fairly well off and, and well known in her own right as a tennis pro. Rather semi famous, really. Um, it, it's kind of unusual for someone like this just to disappear with no explanation. Well, let us start our search in her room. See if we can turn anything up there. I'm gonna... Okay. Um, unfortunately, uh, nothing much is really found. Um, it, I mean, the the house, you know, looks like it it's been lived in. Um, a lot of her personal effects are there. She's her wardrobe, all of her tennis equipment, her her traveling. The stuff that she travels with, suitcases, chests, things like that. She's got all of her, her medals and her trophies, you know, on display um, in the trophy room. Um, but unfortunately, no clues as to what may have happened to her. Well, we're, you know, asked, I mean, I'm sure I would know where no she No diary? No diary. Anything like that? Mm-mm. Um, let's, uh, let's turn up where she was training and see if we can't find anything there. She was, yeah, was at there, the club. Yeah, there's a tennis club downtown you know, that Sparky, you know well, and you probably know just about everybody oh, yeah. down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, well, I also ask, uh, I, I guess maybe this probably wouldn't be a safe place to stay if we're thinking the Order of the Silver Twilight's involved here, so... Um, we'll, uh, comfort Yo, Mary, we'll rent, Mrs. Rent Harris place. one last time before we leave and, uh, tell her we're, we'll report back if we, if we find anything on Mary Lou. Let's go down to the club of ACO. Okay. Yeah. She's, uh, Mrs. Harris is, uh, you know, very, uh, thankful and grateful that you're willing to, to help try to find her daughter. So you guys head down down to the, the uh, tennis club, and uh, why don't you both of you guys give me a luck roll? And you get down there, you know, and you oh, bang! Look at that. You know, you go to George, the manager's office, and you, there's some other tennis pros there. Uh, you know, when you get there that, you know, and you just start kind of asking around if anybody's seen Mary Lou or what happened to her or whatever. Um, Lee, you can roll your luck as well. If you'd like. <clears throat> okay. Um, Sparky, you find out from, uh, one of the tennis pros there. A guy you know pretty well. He says that, I don't know, for about a week, the week before she went missing, um, they had a um, sort of a, a party, um, sort of like a ball. Um, and he actually went to the ball with her. They're just friends. Um, but he, he saw her uh, that night. Um and uh, again, a couple of days later, um, speaking to a, he describes a dark skinned foreigner um, that he didn't recognize. Hmm. Um, he seemed rather, he seemed kind of strange looking, um, he says, and, and he was wearing a fez. Uh, wearing motherfucker. God damn order of the silver twilight. And, th and this was probably, I don't know, four or five days before she went missing. Because I don't know if it has anything to do with it, but this guy's very kind of strange and kind of kind of scary looking. Um, you know, we, you know, we here at the club, you know, the community here of the tennis pros and, and assistants and things like that, you know, we usually don't, uh, associate or socialize with with those types so it was kind of unusual 
uh, to see her um, with this guy. Very strange. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's a chance sighting, but that's very informative. So, thank you. Let me. Uh... He hadn't seen this guy before. No, nope. he doesn't know. He doesn't. Doesn't know who this person was. He was dark skinned. He looked either maybe a, a Arabian. Middle Eastern, maybe, maybe, maybe African. Did, he, did you see anybody else with him, or did you see a no. car he got out of? No. No. I just saw her talking to this guy on two separate occasions. Uh, once here at the once here at the club, um, after uh, after the party that we had that night, um, and uh, and then again uh, down at the uh, the public park. Uh, when I ran into her um, just by chance um, and she was with this gentleman, this dark skinned guy. Hmm. Um, so this is, so, so do I know any of Mary Lou's friends? I can hardly imagine that I don't. No, of course you do. Yeah. And somebody who might've been close to her, a girlfriend or something all. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, you know, probably a good, good number of her friends or your friends as well. All right. Well, I'll try to. Uh... The the you know the tennis pro community is pretty tight knit. You know that you guys are all pretty tight. Like our the blue bloods of Boston. That's right. Well, so uh, I'll I'll ring up Mandy and Joanne yeah. and Catherine. See if they have any, you know, any word on where Mary Lou or, uh, you know, like uh, who she was hanging out with, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll just go down to the club floor. They're probably all there, you know, hanging out. Sure. Yeah, a good number of them. Um, you're able to, to speak to with, with some more people there uh, at the club uh, that afternoon. And unfortunately, none of her friends uh, or anything even uh, talked to her personal assistant. Um and, and she has no clue uh, what could have happened. Um, I don't know if you mentioned this dark-skinned gentleman. You probably would, I assume. Uh, but they don't. They don't know who this person is. They've never heard of her associating with, you know, people of that type. Um, they're actually pretty surprised. Um, but they're all, you know, pretty distraught and worried uh, about what happened to Mary Lou. But none of them really have any anything to go on. Okay. Hmm. Well, as far as they know, she's just kind of listed as a missing person. Um, you know, they know the police are looking for. Her. Apparently, they haven't found her yet. Well, based on what we know, Alicia, what do you think what? our next best move is? I mean, I'm we're I'm pretty sure we know where we're gonna find her. Yeah, they've taken her. That's very clear. And, and, you know, this is, this, this. I mean, stop. Jacob, I mean, God rest his sanity. <laughs> gave me a detailed uh, account of what happened, transpired at the, at the Order of the Silver Twilight, how they rescued Pumpkin and so forth. And, so I have a pretty good idea where she's, if we yeah. wanted to rescue her, there'd be a high degree of danger in doing so. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, there's no choice. I, I think kind of tactics. Yeah. You I know. guess now, now we have to figure out how, uh, how well, there's gonna... only two. Res well, there's only two responses. We can we can either try to negotiate with these people. I mean, obviously, we have a lot of stuff they want. Yeah, for, I would say the book. Yeah, well, I think the book we could use the book as bait. <laughs> you know, and maybe lure them out of the house, and while they're gone, on the fool's errand of trying to get the book back. 
we infiltrate the residents and go down to those under, you know, the the catacombs underneath the Order of the Silver Twilight and see if we can rescue her. I think that's that's going to be our best bet. What do you Uh-oh. think? But well, I th- there's there's just I mean just from a just from a mafioso standpoint of view, you know, it's Tate. It's what girl? They have this girl. Yeah. If we contact them and say, "Oh, you know, we'll trade the girl for the book," they'll immediately try to. How that's going to happen? Okay. I, I mean, I don't know that I would. I don't know that I would even let them know we're interested in the girl at all. I, I think. I think we might. You know, like put something in the newspaper like grand reveal of the one Greek version of the Necronomicon on this time and date, you know, and that time and date, like run over there and try to get into the house. Yeah. You know? Also, also try to think to yourself, you know, what, what would be their motive in kidnapping this girl too? Um, I mean, obviously it, it could be, you know, some kind of, uh, revenge they want to exact some kind of revenge you know or something but you know maybe they could also want to use her as some kind of negotiating tool um or you know maybe this has occurred to you they could just be looking for information sure. as to your whereabouts probably primarily yeah but they probably would have i mean they probably could have gotten that out of her and let her go already yeah true they're not going to let anybody go. Not going to let anyone go. It's probably safe to say, yeah. If, if they're involved in the kind of stuff that you guys have described to me, the thing they're going to do, they're going to kill her. Anyways, even if we try to get with them. Yeah. Obviously, nefarious. And they'll do, do anything but that. So I think the question is, to do exactly what you're saying you know use i just think because of the nature of the book it at all publicly a risk well i mean the nature of the book you know like um let's let's talk um outside of this woman who you know listen you know, human life is a human life, but we're talking we'll to, about the, uh, you know, what's at stake is probably all of humanity in some regard here. So, I mean, I think, do we do we chase after a pawn? I understand what you're saying. I mean, you can just dismiss her completely. Strategically, you know, on, on the chessboard, we're playing with these guys, you know, I, as a as a human, I, you know, I, I'd have to say, well, you know, as somebody I know. Um, well, here's the I, problem, though. Yeah. With you, Here, wait, I mean, wait, wait. The maybe this, maybe this will inspire you. Check this out. <laughs> hey, this, is, no, this is good. So, in the, in the <laughs> okay, in, I in attacked the torches in, at in, the house. <laughs> in, the, in the big scheme of things, you're right. Individually, you know. Uh, they're trying to manipulate, but here's the here's the problem. That they're not going to stop. Okay, well, let's. I mean, I the think next we... victim and along the next victim and a long line of victims to come. You know, everybody you know, your family, your pets. <laughs> all, I mean, these guys are not going to stop. So we we have to we have to deal with this problem in Boston. Okay, Alessio. We, uh, at least that's I, I, that's I that's what happens in Sicily. You know, once they start this kind of stuff, it doesn't. I, so so Lacio breaks it down for me over a calzone. Yeah, right. <laughs> and cappuccino. They're not going to start some. Is that and is that <laughs> Italian liquor? Perfect. Yeah, but that but that, and, I mean that seems. 
I know this is totally out of sequence, like my entire thought processes. Can I see your shirt again? Because I think it's super cool. That's super cool, man. It's what a great cool. shirt. What a great shirt. It says Great Old Ones Grog, and at the top it says Established in Relay 1928. I love it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> super cool it is all right back to um we must garrot every last one of them all right it's clear that it's clear that they're gonna keep and now how how, how you want to approach it is <laughs> you know where paul you guys know where this pollard character lives right we do, actually. I say, Alessio, let's turn up there. And the I'd other... like to attack some of the lanterns and stuff outside and maybe a bridesmaid, if I can, along the way. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you do know, I, I mean, you don't know that it's actually Barry Pollard's residence, per se, but you do know that he has a place or a, an apartment above Margie's tea house. Um, I'm who has skilled in the art muffin. of disguise. I can disguise us. Well, Alessio, I mean, I think, yeah, not only that, but they don't know who you are, right? Um, okay, so true. why don't you, why should, why should, you do uh, disguise. disguise? Yeah, exactly. You should disguise me and disguise you, and let's go get some muffins and break into this place. You want to be a priest? A priest or what? Like a fancy man from Europe. Or I can what? do a workman. Workman. Aristocrat. Those are some of the disguises I have. Priest, workman, or aristocrat? Um, Policeman we could do too, but I don't want to do that. That's a little too risky. Do what? as well but i don't want to do that because it's a little too risky there's no reason to go there um i don't know if i had to pick how about i, I think maybe the the uh workman because you know i could have a tool belt and some things like that where i might be able to you know keep my weapons on me a little bit easier in public especially my bashing devices I need to roll, Sean, for that. Um, I have a skill in it. I guess I'll do the priest. Okay. Um, only if someone's scrutinizing you. But we can assume that you're a master of disguise, more or less. But if somebody it's has, you know, if somebody, you know, has any reason to believe that you're not who you really are, then I might have you roll. Okay. It, it would be like a contested roll with your, you know, your disguise against their psychology or something like that all right cool. man then be like this guy really doesn't seem like a priest <laughs> the, uh, what are we gonna bring with us Kyle? what do you have um well I have a uh, pistol my 1911 pistol and you know I'm a guy who likes to uh, smash people's brains in, so all I need is a good club. Something that might disguise easily on a workman's thing, you know, like a, a large wrench or... I'll throw, the, uh, I'll throw the Thompson in the trunk, Sean. Okay. Very well. I'll bring the garrote pulley knife and my throwing knives. Okay. So you guys are heading down to Margie's tea house. Yes, we are. Looking for Barry Pollard, the sadistic headmaster at Howling's Gate Academy for girls. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. He's actually the headmaster at an academy for girls. Mm. Weird. We didn't find any dirt on him before. No. But he's also a son of Yogg Sothoff, so. 
you remember him saying at one of the uh, little soirees at the lodge, like talking about how society is far too soft on criminals. <clears throat> Don't worry. We're about to make it pretty hard on them. Okay, so you guys uh, <clears throat> head on up to Cambridge, across the river, across the Charles River Dam Bridge. And up there on Charles Street, it's kind of a it's kind of a shopping district, really. Um, on Charles Street, there, um, there are clothing stores, uh, you know, emporiums where you can buy all kinds of knickknacks and uh, tableware, things like that. And Margie's tea house is there. And uh like, the, like a little canvas bag Kyle can stick his club in, like so he looks like he's got a little bag with something in it. Okay. That's and you an guys awesome are, idea. Yeah. Just and like a little are, canvas because you're a workman. And again, you guys are disguised as, as like workmen, like kind of like city workers or something like that. I'm, I'm disguised <laughs> as a as a priest, actually. Uh, okay, you're disguised as a priest and yeah. Marshall. <laughs> Yeah, some. So, so you've got the you're the full getup, like the Catholic, like Catholic priest. Father, oh yeah, right? okay. yeah, father. Yeah. Okay. And I don't speak a very good English. And Sparky, are you disguised at all, or? Yeah, I'm disguised as a workman. Okay. So you're wearing like a coverall. You yeah. Know, with, with a with a cap, like a yeah. wool wool cap or something. Yep, in a in a tool belt, in a, in in a truncheon, in a sack, and uh, my pistol shoved down the back of my okay hands where I can get to it. If I need a nice to. big bar handle mustache on him too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, so you arrive um, in the front of Margie's Tea House. Neither of you were actually here, you know, the last time we uh, the last time these guys, uh, I guess, the Margie's Tea House incident. Uh, with Jacob and the others. Um, but this is it. It says Margie's Tea House and this, you know, flourishing script and the sign out front. Looks like there's a few patrons inside having tea and, and, and muffins. Um, and as you walk in, uh, you can see a gentleman uh, standing behind the counter. Looks like he's baking something. He's kind of, he, he walks out out of the kitchen um, as you guys enter. We'll, we'll enter separately, man. We we like separately. Yeah, okay. yeah. We enter. We enter totally separately. We'll... Okay, who's going in first? Um, Which one of you is going to go in first? I'll, I'll go in first. Okay. So, uh... Sparky, as you enter, uh, the gentleman behind the counter greets you. Um. And there are some open tables if you'd like to sit down. Um, yeah, no. Uh, he just, he just kind of stands behind the counter, just kind of expectantly, you know. Okay. Smiles well, uh, that was a good day. Good day, sir. Should I, uh, do I need to order at the counter or just uh, seat myself and wait to be served? Oh, he says, have a seat. We'll have somebody come out and take your order. Great. I've heard good things about, uh, about the tea house. I'm excited about the muffins. So a young lady comes out and uh, gives you a little menu. And uh, they have uh, an enormous amount of different kinds of teas uh, and coffees and things like that, um, as well as muffins and pastries and such. Um, they even serve, uh, you know, sort of a light breakfast menu. Fruit salad, eggs, toast, thing, those kind of things. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to have some eggs, toast, and a uh, a black tea. Okay. And 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 while uh, while she's at the table, I'm like, oh, hold on for a second. Shh. Do you hear that? She kind of looks around like. Uh, quiet, quiet. Let's just. Let's just listen for a second. So I'm, I, I listen while we're in there to see if I can hear anything upstairs yeah. in the room. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Um, no, you don't hear anything. 
I'm sorry. I thought I might have. I, 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 I work with the uh, the gas lines, and uh, I, I thought I heard something that was concerning to me. I <laughs> I guess it was nothing. Um, uh, please, by all means, bring 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 that delicious breakfast out. And you know what? I'll have a muffin too. Thanks, sweetheart. We'll have it right out to you, sir. And she goes walking back into the kitchen area. The gentleman behind the counter walks back there with her. Um, so as you're watching her kind of walk, you you see what was described to you. There's sort of this side hallway that goes back into the kitchen. And at the very back of the hallway, there's a door that looks like it goes out back into the alley. And next to that is a hallway, which you know this. there's a short hallway that goes kind of turns back towards where you are. And there's a door there with stairs going up to the upper to the uh, second story apartment. Okay. But it, it's back past the kitchen area. And I think at about this time you hear the ding ding of the door as, as a very swarthy Italian looking priest comes walking in. <laughs> hmm. We're, we're going to say that it's a, a Sunday morning and, uh, it's already beginning to kind of heat up. It's it's in the upper 80s already. It's going to be a hot one. And, and Alessio, you're feeling a little hot and under the collar, per se. You know, you got this sort of wool suit on, you know. <clears throat> and you come in. There are three other patrons uh, all sitting together at a table over in the corner having breakfast. Other than that, the place is empty. For Sparky, who's sitting at a table near the counter. Is there, what's the table closest to where I can kind of, you know, be looking back towards the. Yeah, you can situate yourself so you have a good view into the back. You can actually see almost the entire kitchen looking back into the hallway. And there's a there's a window, like an order window. You know, you can see a good, you know, you can see the two people back in the kitchen, a man and a woman. So I'll, I'll sit, you know, so I can see them in my peripheral vision. I'm not staring right at them. Okay. Young lady comes out and, and brings you your your muffins and your your breakfast. Mm, your delicious black tea. And, and uh, you know, uh, when she brings it to me, I, I'm like, "Thank you." So, uh, I swear, I hear something in the the piping here. I, you guys might have a might have a problem. I, I tell you what, I'm gonna eat my food, but I I, I think I might need to take a look around for you. I, 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 I wouldn't right. mind doing it, and you may have an issue. I... She seems a little taken aback, and she she turns and looks at the man, and he, the man's back behind the counter. And he says, "Charlie, this guy seems to think there's something wrong with the pipes." Um, yeah, and I, I said, you know, I, I've been working in this area, you know, trying to identify some some gas leaks that that uh, that we're a little worried about. Maybe some of the old pipes that they put in weren't as uh, sealed correctly as we thought they might be so uh i mean i i just happened to come in here for breakfast but you know if you don't mind maybe after i eat i could take a look around and make sure everything's okay here he's like uh yeah he says uh well i think margie just had some some of the plumbing worked on this spring oh no this is not plumbing this is for the gas totally different oh well if there's a problem i mean sure you can check it out if you like um, yeah, 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 I, yeah. Should I let the owner know? I mean, that's up to you. Uh, I mean, it's not like I'm charging for it or anything like that. If there's an issue, we can. You're not charging about. for it? Because I, I, I think I, he's like, I think I should let Margie know before you do anything. Give me a fast talk, okay. Kyle. All right. Give me a fast talk. Fast let's, see talk. You, let's see if you can kind of calm him down a little bit and be like, I've got this under control. I don't know. My fast talk isn't the it's, best. It's like it's like. Don't worry. I'm the supervisor of the fifth oh, district. Oh, bang, baby! Boom! Extreme success. I got to mark that one off. So yeah, you give him some line like, hey, "Hey, you're like, hey, look, I, I'm the I'm the supervisor of the you know fifth district I'm of a this supervisor. municipality." <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so he's like, yeah. Do, well, that's that's that that's fine, Mister. Uh, what can I do? Do you need? 
can I do anything to help or oh, I for, can... now, for now? I mean, I, I mean, I don't think you got a crisis here, but let me, I'll eat breakfast and I'll, I'll, I'll look around after that. Okay. Sure thing. The uh, young lady comes up to you, Alessio, and she hands you a menu. She's like, uh, good morning, father. Um, he said our, our special today are, uh, Strawberry crepes uh, with uh, cream, strawberries, and the explosive gas leak. <laughs> Take that and uh, a, a cup of coffee, please. Certainly, I'll have it right out. So, uh, Sean, um, Sparky's gonna eyeball everybody here and is alessio by far the largest person in this room yeah yes alessio like, is alessio is a, a gargantuan man yes and he's, well, he's I don't know. taller than he's taller than everybody too right yeah That's okay perfect. safe to say yeah I mean, actually, he's not that like big, you know, stature-wise, but he's very muscular, you know. He's like lean muscular, I guess you could say, and probably pretty tall. Over okay. Six. Yeah. That's what I wanted to make sure. He's the tallest person in the place. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's good news. Because there's going to be some pipes I just can't get to. But, man, if a really tall, generous man of the cloth would help me out. I'm just going to exit roll 20 here for a second. I'll be right back. All right. All right. So what's the plan, Sparky? Uh, well, I, I, you know, I, I finish up the breakfast and, uh, you know, dab the corners of my mouth, you know, mm -hmm. that was delicious. Um, let's, uh, let's get to, to looking around here if you don't mind. Um, so in a lot of these older buildings, you know, they, they, they ran the piping through different parts of the, uh, or, you know, they ran the piping not just through the, the places where you're going to cook food, but in other parts of the building as well. So I just have to take a general look around the, the whole place. And uh, I tell you what, some of the pipes are, are usually a little higher than I can get to. Mm -hmm. um, Padre, I hate to impose on you, but my uh, son. I don't I don't have a, a ladder with me, but but I could use a man of your size. You, you seem like you might be able to reach up places. Could, would you mind following me around? I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart. It seems like something you might help, and it, it would help the general safety of... Yeah. Yes, okay. Yes, bless you. I Of course I will help. All right, so, you know, I'll get up and I'll start, you know, looking around, like knocking on the walls, putting my head against it. Um, and, uh, you know, make my way to the, uh, to the kitchen area, kind of look around, you know, Okay. Uh, do the same thing. Yeah. Then, the, the, the man and the, the young woman just seem to kind of, you know, let you do your thing. They're, they're take, they have some, a couple of other customers come in the front door. Um, so they get kind of busy, you know, taking care of customers and stuff. So you're kind of on your own at this point. They're, they're not looking over your shoulder then, or anything. And, yeah, and, in, so. and indeed, by the back door, there's this very thick wooden door uh, that, that looks, it's locked, actually, with a padlock. It goes out to the alley. Um, there's a window in the back of the kitchen. You can see there's an alley back there. And then to your right, to the right of that door is a short hallway that kind of goes back and then turns to the right. And then there's a door right there. Uh, that goes up to the upper story. That that would be okay. the door that was described to you by you know the others when they told you about the uh, Marty's Tea House incident. All right, so we'll start heading up there. Um, you know, I'll keep looking. I'm not knocking or anything at this stage, but I'm just looking. Yeah. You know, and, and well, there's another door at the top to the, of the stairs. To, to... Yeah, there's another door at the top of the stairs that is locked. Uh, um. Alessio, you got any lockpick skills? Mm, I do not. Don't believe. Let me check my character sheet to be absolutely sure.
What's that? Nope. No, you don't. I'm in your character now, you don't. I uh, uh, the peeing were, but the stairs. Do you have a key to that? I'm sorry, say it again. I said, you know, everything looks good downstairs here, but, uh, you know, the one last place I need to check is the, the upper floor. Is there a key to the to the, the door up there? You guys have access to that? Yeah, he gives you something like, oh, well, that's, uh, that's Mr. Pollard's apartment. I'm not sure if I should do that. But then you give him some, you know, official, you know, line and stuff. He's like, oh, okay, well, now that you put it that way going off of your fast talk roll sure and uh he goes over to this small office off the kitchen uh, and gets this set of keys and opens the door for you okay great thanks we'll just be a few minutes here as i check everything out okay as you enter the apartment there's a small living area um, and in the back of the living area beyond that, um, there's this uh, small kitchen uh, with a small refrigerator, countertop, small stove, and things like that. Um, as you walk into the living area, this guy is still on the, like on the stairs behind you guys as you enter this room. Sitting on a uh, sofa uh, to your left, you see a man... Um, in a dark suit, very pale looking skin, uh, kind of pockmarked looking really, bald head, and he stands up as you enter the room, and he looks at you with sort of this vacant gaze. Um, very large fellow, over six feet, probably about 250 pounds. And he just, he's looking at you. Okay. I say, um, hey, we're just checking the pipes downstairs, and I grab my satchel with the thing in it, and I try to smash him in the face with it. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let me set this up then. Um, it, it, you know, this guy actually, of course, he looks very similar to these uh, these guards that you witnessed witness at the Annex building in New York. Um, also, these weird-looking, pale-skinned gentlemen were seen lurking about the lodge uh, in some of those parties and stuff that, that were had there before the initiation of the others. Let's just put you guys out here. Let me set this up real quick. Since you're essentially attacking this guy. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's use... Let's add Sparky. I'm going to start the initiative tracker here. Sparky's dex is 85. Let's see, his dex is 60. here well that looks pretty horrible <laughs> this guy has a 60 as well <clears throat> all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a roll um, for this guy uh, just to see if he's surprised. 
probably is, but I'm going to do come on, Firefox, work. God damn it. Hang on. It just doesn't want to respond here. Yeah, fine if uh, I reload or reconnect the page. You know, I can see you guys moving, but the like the talking parts go out, so you guys mm -hmm. are just frozen on my screen now. Because every time I reload the page, mm -hmm. like I, I lose like twenty seconds of like what you guys are telling me <laughs> or mm -hmm. what we're talking about. So yeah, I think it's just your connect. Yeah. Damn, we've had those guys out here. Anybody so else on your? Is anybody else on your line, Kyle? Oh yeah, of course. All right, Sparky. With... All right, so Sparky. So you're like, oh, we're just here to check the pipes, and you and you rip out the, uh, you know, your weapon, and you just go at him. He kind of raises his hand as you approach. Okay. Uh, so it's going to be a fight. Uh, it's going to be a fighting brawl roll. He's going to be fighting back. Okay. Should I go ahead and roll? Go ahead and roll. Hmm. I'm not to work on this Firefox thing because it's just. All right, you got a 33, which is a hard success. He failed. That's going to be two damage, I believe. Yeah, that's that's what it says. Yep. Yeah, let me look at something. Since this is our kind of first fight using the new rules, I want to make sure I do it right. Yeah, and the fight back, the highest level of success wins. And just so you know, if it's a draw, like in other words, if both of you just got hard successes or both of you got regular successes, uh, the initiator, the attacker wins and does damage if both fail no damage is inflicted um so you whack him for two and lee now since both of you guys have a 60 initiative it's going to depend on what you guys do he, to see who goes first um he's going to be fighting back he's going to be fighting sparky basically so what is the what is alessio Ale going to do um, move behind him and garrot him. Okay, and your percentage to hit with that is? That's uh, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, garrot is going to be 75. Okay, so if initiative is tied, the person with the highest skill in whatever they're doing is going to get to go first, so you're going to get to go before him. So you have to kind of wheel around. You, you kind of have to hop over this like coffee table that's in front of the sofa to get behind them, and you whip right. out your garrot. Um, so go ahead and do that. He's going to attempt um, to dodge that. The dice. Oh come on. My screen is just, it's just everything is so slow and unresponsive. Sorry. Why? Well, he rolled a 76. Can he, use a, line. can he use a luck roll or like a luck point to push himself over? Or? Can't you use luck on combat rolls? Uh, okay. No, but you, um, I think you can push it though. Let's see if he dodges. Um, you should push it, man.
Yeah, he failed his dodge roll. Push it, Lee. Push it. Well, let me let me look at something real quick here. Um. He's so good with the garage. Yeah. And, um. I mean, this guy is totally distracted. He just got bashed on the head. Oh wait, I you can you can only push. Uh, skill checks and ability checks, like strength, intelligence, and such. Oh, so you can't push with it. what you got. So, so that's uh, he—he kind of you know gets away from you a little bit there, Lee, and you're not able to get the garrot on him at this point. So he is going to—he's uh, going to attempt to grab your weapon, Sparky. So give me a brawling roll. Okay, just my uh, fight brawl, right? Got it. Yep. One, let me get back to those. <laughs> Takes like 10 seconds for me to roll a freaking die. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Whoa. Ooh. You are one brawling dude, man. Look at that. He also, he also got an extreme success. So don't we tie up then? Yeah. What what is the weapon you're using? Uh it's it's a uh, it's a club. Okay. All right. Um, he kind of grabs for it, you know, and starts pulling it, and he pulls it away from you. He disarms you, basically. And we're back to you, Marshall. Okay. So he's pulled my weapon away from me? Yes, he has disarmed you. No, he's holding the club. Disarm him. <laughs> What's that, Lee? From him again? Um, well then... Attack. Yeah, yeah, what that is, it's basically... It's called a maneuver, and it's a fighting brawl check. And he would have an option to either... Um, dodge or fight back. Okay, well, um... You can just attack him. Yeah, I'm just gonna punch the guy in the face then. Okay. Go ahead and, uh, we'll fight Brawl. He's gonna fight back. Hard success. Go. Boom. All right. Punch him in the face. Damage is one. It's a 1d3 damage. All right. Barely phases him, though. It's kind of like, you hit him in the face. Alessio, we're back to you. I'm going to go right. All right. Go ahead and roll. Yay! Um, he's gonna try to dodge that. Oh, oh, he fumbles the dodge. I hope he dropped the club on his face. Falls into the garage. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, it around his neck and. All right, uh, roll a d6 for the initial damage as you get him in the garage. A 4-2, right? Yes, plus your damage bonus, so it would be a plus, yeah, plus d4 as well. All right, so he's four. Some good damage now. He's taking uh, eight points of no, yeah, eight points of damage. I think it's uh, strangle or drowning thing. Yeah, that kicks on with this. yeah. As long as you you keep him in this garage, he's going to take a d6 damage unless he can make a Constitution roll every turn. <clears throat> um, and to escape that, he has to do a uh, he has to succeed at a fighting maneuver. 
know how to get away from it. Um, so, and he and he fumbled his dodge roll. So, he, he kind of Sparky like hits him in the face, and he raises the club like this to swing back at Sparky. And you get him in the garrot, and you hear you know you hear his his breath choke off. Um, he's like. And his knees just buckle, and he falls to his knees in the ground. So you got him kind of down on the ground, um, and he he drops the club, and he brings his hands up like this to his neck. Um, and we'll see if he can get out of it. Um, it's going to be a, his uh, fighting brawl for a, a fighting maneuver um, against your garrot skill. So let's try that. He's got a 50%. See what he gets. And he got a regular success. So you just have to get a regular success or better. Well, they misspelled fighting on that macro. It's fightening. Yeah, fightening, so, fighting. Fightening. fightening. It, this is like lightning. It's like lightning with an oh. L. Yeah, I'm rolling my garrot skill. Yes, roll your garrot skill against his regular success. Oh! He gets away. All right. Because you failed. Bash him in the face, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, he so, so he, he, he kind of he spins around like this, and, and kind of he's down on the floor now on his back, and he kind of twists out of the garrote. Um, one, let's say, like, one of your hands comes off of the, you know, garrote, like, unwinds a couple on, on, the, on the left side, giving him enough slack to escape uh, the chokehold. We're back to you, Marshall. So he's on the ground. He's on the ground. I kick him in the face. All right, roll fighting brawl. I'm gonna give you a bonus die for that since he's down on the ground. So you're gonna read the plus one row when you roll fighting. Um, roll the uh, click the gray the gray roll. Oh, the gray oh. roll. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you got it. You have a bonus die, so there you go. With the plus one, that's a hard success. All right, and he's, then he's, he's fighting back though. Roll he, D three again, and he fails. He, uh, for a kick, yes, it's a D three. Okay, two. He's taking ten points of damage now so far. All right, you kick him right in the head. You bloody his face up pretty good with that. We're back to you, Alessio. And I jump over to where his head is, and I garrot him right on the ground, man. All right, go ahead. I'll wrap it around his neck and twist like a necktie. All right. He's going to try to dodge. Can. Mm -hmm. Bad rolls, Lee. Bad rolls. I'm about ready to start rolling the street percentile off the board. <laughs> yeah. Well, you keep rolling 90s. You're just getting them out of your system. This next time you're gonna roll a great, great roll. So, all right. So don't he, sweat it. Don't so, sweat he kind, it. so he kind of pushes himself up off the sofa, gets off his knees, standing up again. Um, and he's he's gonna try to grapple you, Marshall. He just he's like. <laughs> okay. So uh, you can either dodge or fight back. I can. Dodge or fight back? Mm-hmm. Um, he got a regular success. Technically, you should tell you what you're doing before I roll, but... Okay, well, I was I was going to fight back, so... Okay, so he got a regular success. You got, got a regular, regular success. success. Yeah. So, so he's going to do damage.
Five damage. Yark. That's really hurt. All right. So what he does is he he kind of he grabs you and twists one of your arms up behind your head like this. He's got you in kind of a hold. And you swear you, you feel like maybe your shoulder's going to come out of its socket. Um, what are, What is your max hit points? No. 13. Okay. So generally, if you take seven or more damage from, from any one wound, it's going to be a major wound, but you're okay. You take five. We're back to you, Sparky. Oh, okay. Well, what can I do from here? I'm just going to... I'm going to use the back of my head to bash his face. Sounds good. Because that's what I would do in real life, too. Yeah. Um, oh, you're going to grab my back? No problem. <laughs> beat, he, beat the yeah. hardest part of my body. And he's, he's going to try to rip your arm out of its socket. It's a regular success. Roll the dice. Firefox. Go! Alright. So that means you do damage. Nice. He takes another point of damage from Sparky. All right, he's going to need to make a constitution check from that. Sorry, guys, this would be a little faster if this thing was working for me, okay? He's going to make a constitution check here for consciousness. stays up all right alessio so this guy's still got sparky kind of in a hold sparky whacks him in the face his face this thing's this guy's face has blood all over it now you're in a perfect position right now to garrot him because he's kind of busy with sparky yep. there you go let's see if he can dodge oh, that I'm going to actually give him a penalty die since he's kind of tied up in a grapple with a Sparky. If I can do that. Come on. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's like getting worse, dude. It's just, it's not even responding to my mouse clicks. Let me, let me try something real quick. I'm going to go into. We could just go into Chrome and just. We wouldn't be able to well, see each other though, but the roles yeah, well, might be better. Yeah. Well, you guys just stay there. Don't do anything, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna do this in Chrome. I, I think that will fix it here. <clears throat> I don't think it has to do with any ad. Uh, um, for some That's reason, probably just it's the browser. It's something fucked up with the browser. Yeah. I'll probably just maybe try to reinstall it or something. Yeah, you could do that. You could uninstall it and reinstall it real quick. Yeah, see, so just close, just closing Firefox. Just my computer's working now. Yeah. Hang yeah, tight, guys. I'll be right back. I'm just gonna blow my nose. Sure. Maybe, un maybe uninstall that hideous program. And Yeah, I think that's much better already. It might be roll 20, too, actually. All right. Oh, yeah, that's much better. All right, here I'm we back. go. So, with that grot roll, you had a, su a regular success. I'm going to give him a penalty die in his dodge. And so, reading the minus one column, that's a fail. So you hit him with the garrot again. Choke him out, Alessio. No, I'm not sure if we should actually do the D6 initial damage. I think it's just choking damage, right, from here on out. Or, or does he take the D6? So I, I, I need to re. We need to reread that description on how it. Yeah. How it yeah check, check it out, guys, because I mean. Let me look at it real quick. Yeah. yeah. Just to yeah. make sure we're we're applying it correctly. I get the feeling that 
Alessio be garroting more along the adventure way, so... Yes. Oh, yeah. For sure. Okay, so it requires a victim to make a fighting move or to a maneuver to escape or suffer D6 damage per round. Plus my 1 to 4. Plus the 1 to 4. So I think he doesn't actually take that initial damage. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it means that you have him in the garage now. All right. It makes sense. Let me look at something here. Right. So, so he should have about four more hit points too in that first garage. All right, you've got him in the garage now. So he's got Sparky in this arm hold trying to rip his arm out, and you're behind him. You got him in a choke hold. And uh, it's his turn. He let Sparky go, and he's going to try to escape the garage again. So give me a garage check for uh, Lesio against his uh, maneuver. He's using Fighting Brawl for, for a maneuver here. And he failed. And you got a hard success. So he's still in the garage. So on his turn, next turn, he's going to take the D6 if he can't escape. Plus the 1 to 4, yeah. It's a new round, Sparky. This guy's got his hands up, you know, again, like this, trying to escape his garage. Okay, well, I mean, real quick question here. Can I pick my club up and hit him with it, or? Yes. Oh, well, in, in the same turn? Sure. That's what I do. Your dexterity is amazing. All right. <laughs> So I'm gonna pick it up, swing with the club. All right, he's gonna fight back. I'm gonna give him a penalty die since he's in the garot. He fails. All right, damage two. Two more points. All right. This dude's pretty tough, man. Hey, he's very tough. Yeah. He is. He's he's big. He's a big guy. <clears throat> bigger, much bigger than Alessio, and probably even stronger. All right, Alessio. Um, this is where he's going it's to curious. take the choking damage if he doesn't make his con roll. He's got a really good constitution, though. He makes it. On his turn, he's going to try to uh, escape your garrote, so give me another garrote check versus his fighting brawl. And he gets a regular success. That is a fail. You rolled a 96 again. Between the low damage and the armor rolls, man. Jesus. Yeah, bad rolls. All right, so he spins out of your garrote again. Sparky, we're back to you. Okay, he spins directly into my club head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he turns around, and you're there. Whack! He's going to fight back. Of course. With his, with his bare hands. All right, see, there's a hard success versus a regular success. That's all you. All right, six, he gets six, six points. Damage. Finally, at long last, some good damage. Hey, some damage. All right, let me do a consciousness check for him. He makes it. All right. So he's like seeing stars at about this moment. Alessio, we're back to you. Let's see if he can make his constitution check or take Get the garage boy. damage. He makes his con check. Um, he's going to try to escape the garage. It's the con check. Man. Well, actually, he, damage like actually that right he, he did escape the garage. Yeah, he escaped it, and he spun into my club for six points. All right, he spins around and uh, tries to elbow you in the face, um, Alessio. Um, so he's he's attacking you hand-to-hand. -hand. So you can fight back or you can dodge. If you fight back, you're using Fighting Brawl. And just basically be an unarmed attack. 
So you want to fight back or do you want to dodge? He's going to elbow you. He's trying to elbow you in the eyeball. I can't hear Lee. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. You're going to fight back? Gonna okay. fight back. We'll, we'll roll fighting brawl then against his fighting brawl. Both fail. Sparky, we're back to you. All right. Um, this one's for Mary Lou. I don't say that out loud, but in my head I do. Yeah. I mean, technically, he should be getting penalty. He should have had probably penalty dice for his last couple rolls. <clears throat> He's fighting multiple uh, opponents gives you penalty dice. All right. Let's see, he's fighting back. He just fails across the board there. Seven damage. All right. Wood meets skull, and his he falls down to the ground unconscious, shattering the uh, the glass coffee table beneath him. Ah, oh, shit! <laughs> Makes a racket. He's breathing. He's alive, but he's unconscious. And uh, you kind of turn, you look, and you see the guy, uh, the waiter or whoever, the uh, the clerk, standing there at the top of the stairs, his mouth agape. I'm like, this this interloper attacked us. He says, ah, ah, and he's just, he kind of points. He He's kind of in a state of shock at this point. So the priest will come over and be like, come here, my son, sit down. I'll bring him into the room. Let's try to sit him down. Okay, he, he comes along. No, I mean, I wouldn't bring him into this room. Leave your garage on the floor and um, take him out of here, dude, so I can finish this guy off. Yeah, I'll, I'll take him out into the hall and close the door. Oh, okay, and as soon fine, as, just... when he leaves the room... I... Yeah, there is a bedroom as well. There's like a pretty large-sized bedroom off of the kitchen back there that you could take him to. Okay, well, he's taking him there, like, close the door. Is that what you're mm -hmm. doing? Okay, then I take I take the garage and I tie it around him, and I put my he foot on the back of his head, and I pull as hard as I can until I don't see any breath coming out of the guy. No problem. He stops breathing. Doesn't take much to choke him out. Choke him out. That's pretty brutal there, Sparky. You've come a long way from okay. the British okay. Open. Well, he's... I think voice chat's cutting out on us here. Yeah, let me, let me leave him and come right back. All right. Can you hear me? Yep. Kyle? I think we're losing Kyle. He's chopping in and out. Kyle, try to disconnect from the voice channel and reconnect. Okay. Try that. Oh, me? Yes. Okay, I didn't hear any of that. I guess that's probably... Okay, hold on. Okay, I just reconnected. All right, Sparky. Uh, you kill the pale-skinned... Uh, what do we call him? The Pale Norseman? <laughs> the, yeah, the, the, pale, the, the Pale Norseman. Yeah. So I search his corpse. Okay. Um, he's got a gun and an ankle holster. It's a forty-five. Other than that, he has nothing on him except for a set of keys. A I'll ring with keys. three keys on it. And uh, this guy is really odd looking, dude. He He seems to have some kind of skin condition for one thing his uh his skin is kind of mottled and red looking his eyes are this strange gray color his eyes are kind of staring at you they're open you know he's dead but his eyes look very strange you've never seen a person with gray eyes like this they're kind of colorless do you know the do you know the spell to shit no you're cutting out on me lee Something about the spell. Yeah, don't we? Don't don't you know a spell? How if this guy is? Uh, I know how to right? uh, like send him back to 
to uh, dust. To dust, yeah. I mean, if he's if he's something that's been so, I'll I'll, I'll say the uh, I'll say the words, you know, in the tone, rabbi, 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 and see what happens. Okay, that may have some negative effect on you, you know. Let me look here. Um, dust, it does. No, do it if it's got negative. Reciting the spell backward returns the resurrected entity to dust. And likewise, requires the expenditure of three magic points and one d10 sanity points. Uh, uh, fuck that! Don't do. All right, I'm, I'm not the, gonna do. It. You know the the writings, um, you know, warn, uh, almost like a in a bit of a clause it, it, towards the end that it, it, it can have negative effects on your psyche um, just you know witnessing either the resurrection um, or the resubstantiation of you know the powder of this thing okay um, so use at your own risk gotcha. I'm going to hold the, off for something got the disclaimer so <laughs> it I has take, the I disclaimer take the I take the key, <laughs> I pocket the garage and, and I'm looking around the room like searching the room. Okay. Um, just a very fine furnishings, mahogany and leather. Um, there's some uh, foodstuffs in the in the kitchen. Um, it looks like somebody lives here, um, but you really don't find anything unusual. Anything that you're looking for specifically? Um, books secret panels mm -hmm. um not hidden is that what you're doing yeah absolutely well i would tell you to roll spot hidden if there's anything to spot yeah i know you would um so yeah i mean i'm just looking i'm looking for anything that looks out of place you know an item you know kind of like the gray eyes is there anything in the room that's like hmm, i haven't seen anything mm -hmm. like that before you know that's not, sort of not really okay is the window open in this place Nope, it's closed and locked. There's there's only one window in the kitchen, kind of a large paned window. Oh, okay. Can looking I, out, uh, looking out over the street. Ah, uh, shit. All right. Well. Okay. Um. Let's see. I'll pull. Is there a blanket or something I can throw over this guy? Yeah. There's a there's a couple of beds in the bedroom. Okay. I I come in and um. I I uh, grab a blanket. And um, I say, uh, hold, hold this for a minute, guys. And I put a I put a blanket over this guy. Okay. To spare this guy's sanity. Yeah, this guy's like going. He's like, what's going on? What the hell's going on, Father? What's happening? Everything, everything will be fine, my son. It's an unfortunate incident. This man attacked. Who is uh that? So, I don't so, know. We don't I know. Mean, some, some so I, I come in and I was like, uh, you know, he, he, we've just knocked him unconscious. He's resting for now. Uh, let me finish my pipe check. And so while I'm in there, I'm, I'm checking in the, the bedroom for uh, for anything that might be in there. Okay. Nothing of interest, really. Um, there's a small closet uh, with a wardrobe. Um, there's some suits, uh, pant suit, pants in there, things like that. Uh, there's some boxes with some old junk, pieces of lamp, pieces of lamps, pieces of uh, you know old furniture and shit like that. There's, um, a small, um, there's a small water closet off of the bedroom. Um, it, it, do I have scissors on me, like on my workman stuff? Sure. I cut all the left pant legs off of his suits. <laughs> okay, you're taking the time to do that. Just all real right. fast. I'm like. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Snip, snip. All right. I'm like, um, uh, Padre, uh, let's me and you go, uh, in ring the authorities. Yeah. Yeah. So Roger's like, yeah, he says, shouldn't we call the cops? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, we'll, we'll go do that immediately. Should, in fact, I, like I've been working with some police officers to get access to these buildings. If you don't mind, um, I, I think they would be offended if I did not inform them first of what's happened here. Um, you know, so let me go fetch them and, uh, we'll be right back. Okay. He seems a little intimidated by you. He just kind of nods. Leave. 
Okay, we leave and we never return. Okay, so you <laughs> guys, are, you guys, scoot out the front door, um, into the uh, the pickup truck, and you're out of there. Well, Barry's not going to be happy with what happened to his suits. Yeah. <laughs> Sparky, your, your knuckles on your right hand are a little bloody. <laughs> You're missing oh, I, I, I scraped them making my one of my fabulous backhands. Yeah, you hit him pretty hard. His his face hit my, my fist pretty hard. The guy was a monster. Oh, what we considered doing is we could just post up outside this place and wait and watch at a distance and see who shows up. We could. That might be too risky. I don't know. Well, there, I mean, we didn't find anything worthwhile there. And, True. you know, if you recall, like, the, the from the stories we heard, you know, these guys can ship, shape, shift, and they got caught. When it, didn't somebody get caught on the street? I think it was, I don't know, one of the one of the guys uh, I never met. Barry, Barry Pollard um, and uh, Edgar Casey had that yes. encounter on the street exactly where, where Barry Pollard basically admitted uh, to to Edgar that he had taken that the shape of the African man on the bus would this be a good time for us to take like a yes. five minute break yeah let's take five all right guys thanks all right cool perfect be right back we're gonna stick with the Monty Python theme for the intermission and we'll play the intermission music Thank you. 
Ó. Oh. So that was a uh, Sparky and Alessio's first action together. So hopefully Alessio will respect Sparky despite his blue bud background. <laughs> I think with the gar garata, I'm not sure. I think, I mean, it's that man. It's almost not. I think the way it should be is damage. They roll kind of see out. I'm pretty sure. Because if they make their constitution and they don't take damage, it's almost. What I mean, I'm better off just like attacking. Mm, the thing is, is that this something. guy had an insanely high constitution. He had like a 90. No, but I think if, if you read the description, I think it's. All right, I'm back. <clears throat> Back and refocused. All right. So you guys are gonna hang out at Margie's tea house to see what happens, or are you gonna boogie on out of there? What do you think, Alessio? Probably Aaron on the side of caution. We should probably boogie on out of here. Stay, but your points well taken. Sure. Okay. Hmm. I mean, guess what are we going to see? Barry Pollard show up and get really pissed off? Hmm. We're definitely not going to see him come out in a new suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, now Chrome was just working beautifully. For some reason, when I was in Firefox, man, it's just, it's pushing my processor, like, over 50 percent it starts getting hot oh but i don't know why i'm i think i'm just going to reinstall firefox see what happens i think well, it might i think I it might be some roll 20 optimization problems on their end is what i'm thinking should we try to log in through chrome then no it's working fine for me now it's just i'm not gonna be able to get video using chrome for me like in the recording that I'm doing on the other PC that's in Firefox, I'm getting video for you guys, uh, and it seems to be working okay. It's working fine, but I don't know. I'll have, between this session, before the next session, we'll have to figure out what, what's going on with Firefox. I'm sure I can do that. I'm sure it's just something that I need to troubleshoot a little bit. Yeah, there may be some settings or some stuff you can do. Yeah. But, uh, all right, so uh, what's the next step, guys? That was interesting. A little rusty well, on the garroting. I need to, I need some more practice. Um, <laughs> and make sure you guys check any skills that you succeeded at there for Sparky's smashing abilities. Yeah, Sparky kind of kicked his ass. He, he Good job, a, Sparky. He, he, he was a big guy. I would say it seemed bigger, but he's got to be close to the biggest guy. <laughs> he was a big motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Y your arm's pretty sore, though. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to. So how does that heal since it was... One per day. Which is actually a little bit better than the old rules, I think. You'll, you'll heal just a slightly faster than the old rules we were using, which was like you know, 1D3 per week or something like that. Can I, can mm -hmm. the, can I have the doctor take a look at it? We, yeah. Um, yeah, you can do a first aid. If you can have somebody do a successful first aid on, on you, you'll get 1D3 back immediately. I'll, um, go see Dr. Van Helsing. We're going to see him anyways. Or... Yeah. Where are you guys staying, by the way? We, we never um, kind of determined that. 
think Alessio can uh a house. I'm sorry, what about a house? Um Alessio can rent a small house. Okay. Well that could take a little time where you guys stay in the meantime. Have any um does he have any connections here, Underworld? Are there any mob? No, I, I think we kind of decided like it's your first time to America. I mean you may know, you know I mean some names or something, but no, you really don't know anybody personally in Boston. I mean, there's any number of hotels or motels that you guys could stay in. That would be the obvious thing to do. I mean, you can always just use an assumed name or something if you're worried about. That's what we'll do. We'll just find them. a little non a nondescript. Yeah. Bass hotel. Just yeah. Let's just say there. that Van Helsing's, you know, hanging out in the hotel room, you know, with his books and stuff. Uh, you guys get back to the hotel. Let's see. Uh, he can do his first aid. All right. Nice job, doctor. All right, Spark, you're going to get back two HP. And uh, I believe, let's just take a look at it so we all know. I believe if you haven't taken a major wound, which you haven't, I think it's you get back one per day. And then after each week, you can have a medicine check rolled on you for to get back uh, 1d6, I believe. First day. Yeah, the right back. the once a week thing is just for major wound recovery. So essentially, Spark, you're going to get back one per day at this point. Okay. With no no further rolls required or anything like that. Okay. It's just going to be sore for a while. Uh, the doctor puts you in a sling. He's like, you need to wear that for a few days. Yes, doctor. Okay, well, um... He tells you probably just stretched out some ligaments, you know, and says it's going to be sore. Does he want some morphine? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll pass. Okay. Um, how, about, how about some of this? I wouldn't want to dip into your private stash. It's very he, generous. He, but... he lays out some lines on the coffee table. <laughs> that 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 can't be good. Um. So, uh, I mean, I think our next step. We didn't find anything. You know, we tell him what. We turned up at Barry Pollard's place, and all we did was end up, you know, murdering some big pockmarked. Aryan mutant. Um, I think the the next later. Yeah, the I, I think that the next our next move is to go to the Order of the Sil Silver Twilight. Or yeah, I mean, I think that. Remind me the neighborhood that the Order of the Silver Twilight's in. Is it? Is it? It's residential, pretty much, right? Yes, uh, it's in the Cambridge area. Here, I'll take it over the map real quick here. It's up uh, uh, in Cambridge, uh, not too far away from the Harvard campus. It's up here. It's kind of on the edge of a of the neighborhood over here by willow street and back behind behind the lodge is a a large uh kind of park public area 
There's, just, there's kind of a park out there behind where the lodge is. Big park behind it? Really? Uh-huh. It's like a public well, park. I mean, um, can we, uh, I guess let's, let's go look at some papers from the last few weeks just to see if they put any adverts out for like, you know, come to the silver twilight manor or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then let's, uh, after that, let's, and if we don't find anything interesting there, maybe we should, you know, just observe the place. Alessia, I don't know. What do you think? when they have their meetings. Yeah. Well, you guys know at the standard meetings that they have. Uh, Kyle, Sean? The, the uh, I mean, generally, when those guys, when Jacob and the boys are all hanging out there um, as members of the order, just about every night, um, people were there. Um, you know, they have dinners just about every night. But the regular meetings that they have on Tuesday nights, they have meetings for prospective members. And then, uh, as far as you recall, you believe it was Thursday nights, late, late at night, like 2, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., um, they would have these, uh, um, these sort of indoctrination ceremonies for new members. So Tuesday nights and Thursday nights, at least, you know, what, you know, last month or whatever, when you, when, uh, when these guys were hanging around the lodge was when they were having the regular meetings. Other than that, just about every night there's people there, members, you know. When do we think that the, they're probably the busiest? Probably on the meeting nights, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Busiest as in, um, in terms of they're distracted doing other things and maybe we could get access to the catacombs. Yeah. It would probably be the busiest times would be Tuesdays and Thursday nights. The other nights, you know, would be just kind of hit and miss. Um, usually it's just, uh, members, uh, showing up there and having drinks and meals. Um, I mean, I don't know, man. I'm not real comfortable about going down into their cellar, man. It sounds scary. You probably shouldn't be comfortable doing that. I think maybe what we should do is just uh, blow up their house. I think that's kind of what Van Helsing was getting at. Last I, I think, heard. I think I'm on board with that. I think it's a great idea well i mean can can we uh take a run over to the the library and just see if we can turn turn up any information what are you looking for specifically um any events that may have happened or you know especially yeah any any more disappearances things like that okay or any outreach programs that the Silver Twilight's now engaged in as well, you know, like, are, are they advertising, you know, kind of like uh, the the order, you know, the people like, come down and eat, you know, the, the donuts and coffees on us, that sort of thing in town. Yeah. No, you really don't find anything like that. And, and they generally don't do that sort of thing. It's all kind of by word of mouth as far as recruitment. Um, the only thing you do find is that the annual police ball um, hosted by the, Sil the Hermetic Order of the Silver Twilight Lodge um, is coming up next month in September, uh, September 12th. Um, other than that, you really don't find anything. I mean, no public announcements regarding the lodge or anything like that. Just kind I'm of a short, far. yeah, just kind of a short blurb. What about the park? Is there any information on this park, Sean? Like when it was made or any incidents in the park, anything like that? No. We Have we gone and looked at this park by any chance? Has anybody I mean, been back there? 
Well, you assume from what you know that the whole area here was part of the old John Scott farm at one point. You know, um, the the lot where the Silver Twilight Lodge sits uh, is a pretty big lot. It's like, you know, seven acres, something like that. It extends into a part of the park, but it's generally just a kind of a public park. They have, you know, duck ponds and uh, bike paths and things like that back there. But no, I mean, nobody's ever gone out to the park as far as I know. I know wasn't, we haven't. Uh, wasn't there a somewhere? Maybe that's where the park sits. A what somewhere? You keep cutting out on me. Graveyard. Graveyard. Wasn't graveyard. there a graveyard around here, here somewhere? We, here, here we go with the graveyards. Um, no, not really near the lodge. No. Okay. I mean, you guys know that there was once a graveyard near the lodge, but it was moved. You were never really able to find out where exactly it was moved to. You have a rough idea that it was moved uh, down, you know, near the Charles River Basin somewhere, but you were never able, able to find out exactly where this Anglican, this old Anglican graveyard was moved to. I think you guys spent a day trying to figure that out, but you never really did. Um, <clears throat> here's what I think, Alessio. Um, we know that anybody who's been interned into the catacombs below is probably lost. Um, maybe they'd be better off dead. So I think, you know, like, I think running down into there is, is just a, you know, a good chance of getting killed, caught or losing our minds. Um, uh, no, I think, no, I agree. It's safe to say that Clyde Whipple, just, for Clyde Whipple and everybody involved in that affair with burning John Scott certainly felt that these inhuman things that they found in, down there and stuff should be dead and i think they wound up actually killing them so yeah in that respect you're right um i say we get our ordinance together and we roll to the house and um you know put some dynamite on the outside of it and blow it up while everybody's <laughs> getting initiated man Yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely, I just, you know, it is unfortunate that somehow we can't rolls of, you know, fuel and gasoline down into that basement, man. Down in there, you know, not, not going down in there, just a shame we can't. Yeah, I mean, it certainly would be a, a risky endeavor to, to even enter the lodge at this point um at, at least for sparky i mean you know keep in mind alessio is unknown to these people if you wanted to go the whole route of uh <laughs> you know be, becoming a prospective member of the order and that whole deal i mean that's certainly a possibility for someone like alessio to gain access anyway but i mean i think the only thing that you could i mean Let's let's roll over there and. I like the idea of I like the idea of uh, you know just blowing the place up. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to think of the most effective, destructive, you know, creative. We if we're if we're gonna do this, we, we should try. Yeah, you think about that for a second. So I, do it. I mean, I, I mean, you know, I think if we could get like some. Um, I mean, you know, just throwing kerosene on the outside of the house and then, you know, um, dynamite. Yeah, like lots of dynamite. I'm thinking about getting like a fuel oil truck. And driving it through the front and, door. And driving it through the front door and, and blowing that thing up. I mean, I'm talking, yeah, like a fuel oil truck with dynamite on it. And of course, you, you have to... I mean, you have to think it would be ideal, you know, if, uh, 
you know, Barry Pollard and John Scott and Max Reed, if these guys are still around, it would be ideal if they were in the, in the house when you blew it up. Right. That would be the perfect <laughs> time to get them at yeah, one so of the meetings. Way, meeting night is definitely the time this is going to happen. Yeah. The question is delivery system. I mean, you know, are we, are we going to. Yeah. And given the I state of affairs, to... you guys have been in Boston now for, well, I mean, you took a day trip to Arkham, but you guys have been in Boston now for a few, four days or so. Um, and you know, no vengeance bears have been sent after you or anything, and you haven't seen any guys and fezes hanging around. So it's pretty safe to say that they probably don't know you're back in, in Boston. Although the incident just happened at the Margie's tea house, you know, may give them a clue that, you know, something's going on. Oh, weird. A lot of enemies. Norse men are a dime a dozen of these guys. You know, he could have, he could have fallen on a garage and choked himself out. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I like the fuel truck, Lee. Let's, let's, uh, what? I can't hear Triple A on the, there's a driveway this place big front door steps going up what's the way out yeah at the big at the front of the house was sort of this big half moon you know a driveway where all where they park all their cars um and then you know there's a small walkway up to a front uh porch you know it's got all you know white whitewashed banisters and stuff all along the front of it um and there are these big double doors do they um do they receive like uh did they get like fuel oil sure. delivery? They Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Just about just that's, about everybody that's... does in this part of town. I mean Cam Cambridge, the Cambridge area is sort of an upscale part of town, by the way. You know, all these homes and houses back here are very, you know, f fairly wealthy uh, neighborhood back in here. Um so, yeah, you assume that pretty much every household back here, you know, gets fuel oil and and, um... and whatnot. Alessia, why don't you pose as the fuel truck driver? Well, I just noticed that uh looks like the Silver Twilight Lodge is just down the street in Willow Street from Donnelly Field. Huh. What's what is that? Scary. I think Donnelly Field's the baseball field. I mean, I don't know what it was back in the nineteen twenties. I know this map is a more modern map, but Oh, so that's the big green monster? I think so, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it Donnelly Field? I don't think it's called Donnelly Field anymore, but maybe I it is. Don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Me and Lee have been like walked by there when we were in Boston. Yeah. We loaded right there at that little bar. Yep. Um, Lots of cute girls running around there, too. Whoa. Oh, I bet. Yeah, Cam Cambridge is uh, it's college yeah, town for sure. There's a bunch of colleges around there. Well, Lee, chicks, uh, yeah. Alicio. Yeah, it's MIT. Do you think you could, you think you could um, schedule when these trucks come around and then figure out po possibly either a real one and getting one ourselves or hijacking that one? There's a couple ways we could go about it. I think delaying the, the one would probably be better. You know, just call them up and be like, oh, yeah, we don't need the delivery here. Well, I mean, I think I think some uh, unfair questions, you know, like, is, is it kind of like the meter readers, you know, like, you know, they don't really announce your house, you know, so with the gas, you know, I don't think they probably didn't have to make a schedule. They're just stopping by to pump, right? Um, I would imagine that back then it, it wasn't a regular thing. I think customers would probably call the gas company when they needed gas you know or they may have had regularly scheduled you know re-ups or refills or whatever um and meter reading i don't think was a thing it was just a when you needed when you needed it you called them you know when they pull when they pull the truck up and they and then they pull the hose out to, to fill up the tank where's the truck in location to the house is it right beside it it would be on the side yeah oh it is it's right on the side Mm -hmm. well see i mean i think the thing is is like you know they probably aren't going to be meter reading or not meter reading but you know like filling this thing up at the time that these guys are having their meeting 
True. You that's know? true too. So, that's true too. So, that's, true so that's too. why I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I like it, but you know, it's probably like a bi-monthly thing too. It's probably not very often. I'm just trying to think of a way. I mean, the dynamite's a great idea. I just would love to see this place. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I guess if we can get to a spot where we can observe, you know, the, the house and to see if, do they have it patrolled or. The you, would really have, you would really have no way of knowing unless you staked it out. Well, I mean, at is least there you know, a, what we'll look, we'll, do this. I'll, I'll look in the, uh, I'll look in the paper and see if there's any for rent over there on the side of that place in or any kind of office on the Silver Twilight Lodge. Real uh, estate listings to see if there's, you know, apartment for rent or a store. Or... Yeah, you find some, uh, some homes for rent uh, in that general neighborhood. You also find some uh, open uh, storefronts. Uh, up for lease along Cambridge Street there in the Merchant District. There, it has a particularly good place as far as view, or are they all kind of obscured? Or yeah, nothing that that close to the lodge. No, I mean it, it's a residential neighborhood, and the lodge kind of sits back in a cul-de-sac at, at the end of the street. You know. How about from the park is can you can you see the lodge from any any angle in the park oh yeah the the lodge sits backs right up to the park okay so the would it be lodge. possible for me to take a take a stroll into the park and sit down with a book of my bible <laughs> yeah still Absolutely. have a pretty good view. okay that's what i do okay all right so uh it's Sunday evening now, uh, Sunday afternoon where you guys are at uh, Marcus Tea House, August 10th. So that evening, Sunday evening, you're going to go out to the park and scope it out? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you get out of the park, you know, and families are out with their dogs and the birds are chirping. It's a, It was a hot day. It's starting to cool off a little bit now. If I can find someone, like if there's an older person sitting at a bench or someone, you know, I'll try to sit. Okay, you do. You find an old man feeding pigeons sitting on a park bench. Um, yeah, so and, I'll, I'll, and, I'll... And the lodge is kind of, you know, up this gently sloping hill up there. You can see the lodge up there. It's not too far away, maybe 100 yards away. I'll just make some small talk with this old gentleman, ask him, you know, who, what's his name and tell him I'm visiting from Italy, blah, blah. Okay. Um, so he talks My to you. My name is Barry Pollard. <laughs> right. Damn it. Yeah. So he makes some small talk with you, you know, tells you all his troubles. Oh, well, I, uh, you're cutting out on me, Lee. I, uh, I, I say a little prayer with him and bless him. You're a bastard. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kind of keeping the lodge in my periphery looking for anybody. Okay. Any, any kind well, of guards. Yeah, you're down there for, you know, a good half hour, 45 minutes. You don't see anybody milling about, you know, like in the backyard or anything of the lodge. The lodge has sort of a picketed fence, you know, in the back with a small yard and there's a garden. Uh, but you don't see anybody, you know, walking around like, sentries or guards or anything like that but you are oh, looking at the trolling. back yeah you're, you've you know you got a view of sort of the rear of the house there are no windows notably in the second and third stories of the lodge on either the sides or the back of the lodge they have no windows only the ground floor has windows but yeah you don't see anybody walking around back there or anything okay um I'll get up and I'll uh, I'll walk around to uh, let's see, where is it Medford Street and I guess I'll kind of come up and I'll Cambridge Street on the on the far side and I'll I'll walk. Okay. 
heading towards Harvard Library. So I'll just kind of take a, a little glance over there and see if I see anybody patrolling around in the front. If there's any right. cars or there's a half a dozen vehicles parked out front. Um, and uh, just kind of walking down the street over the course of about 15 or 20 minutes, um, you see uh, another car pulls up. You know, these are all nice cars, you know, uh, pulling up here. And some a couple of gentlemen get out and they go inside of the lodge. Um, but no, there's nobody really milling about out there in the front. It's a, It's about dusk now. You got about another, you know, half hour of daylight. Sunday I'll, uh, I'm not followed, man. Buddhist routes. I'm sorry, Lee, you're cutting out on me again. Try try reconnecting to the Discord okay. channel. Disconnect and reconnect. Stupid technology. I really wish we could... Uh, I really wish you could play around a table, man. I really do sometimes. I mean, this is great and everything, but it's frustrating sometimes. We, we should we should make that happen this year. Everybody we should. St. Louis. We should. We'll go to Lee's house. He's, he's kind of situated between us. Okay, go, <laughs> go to Kentucky? <laughs> yeah, I want to. Roll sanity. I, Hear me out. Actually... <laughs> Actually, I don't know where Lee is in Kentucky, but Lee, you're probably only a few hours away from me. Anyway. Awesome. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. So so I heard like not being trailed or something like that. That's all I heard. I'll head back to the uh, hotel, but I make I make sure I'm not uh, okay. a couple circuitous routes and stop for, for a coffee and look okay. around, make sure I'm not being followed. Yeah, you guys are situated in uh, the Hotel Grand uh, down on Beacon Hill in downtown Boston. The doctor's all hopped up on cocaine. He's locked himself. He's locked himself in one of the bedrooms with his Necronomicon. <laughs> he says, uh, he shows you guys something that he's reading in the Necronomicon. And uh, he's reading. He's reading it to you. He says uh, something about these serpents. It says, this, "He says, listen to this. The serpents, or what I had then thought of as serpents, had disappeared. But in the dead embers of the fire, now cold and black, was a shining metal plate. I picked it up and saw that it was also carved as the stone, but very intricately, after a fashion I could not understand. I did not bear the same." It did not, I did not bear the same markings as the stone, but I had a feeling I could almost read the characters, but could not, as though I once knew the tongue, but had since long forgotten. My head began to ache as though a devil was pounding my skull when a shaft of moonlight struck the metal amulet, for I now, for I know now what it was, and a voice entered into my head and told me the secrets of the scene I had witnessed. Cthulhu. Oh, that's not good. In that oh. moment, as though whispered fiercely into my ear, I understood. These are the signs carved upon the gray stone that was the gate to the outside. And he shows you these strange symbols. <clears throat> um, Interesting, this... doctor. Yes. You're going to need some more <laughs> cocaine if you keep reading it. Um, just so you guys know, from doorstep to doorstep, from your place, Sean, to uh, Lee's place is six and a half hours, 429 miles. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's still a day trip. That's not uh, bad. I, I, well, I was just saying, Lee, with this, this tech, you know, this technology is all great and everything, but I was just saying, man, I wish we could just play around the table sometime. And, and Kyle said, well, we need to make that happen this year. And I agree, man, we should. That's such a great idea. Yes. Yeah, I am all. Yeah, have and, a weekend of Cthulhu or something, you know? Yeah. And, and since, uh, since I'm getting married, we could, you know, make it the bachelor party thing, which, you know, playing Cthulhu would be. That would be sweet. More in my wheelhouse than anything else. So we should. You set combine. a date? You guys set a uh, date? 
no, not yet. We've got a um. We're looking at we're looking at the. Uh, Sammy has some friends that live in Georgia, and they've got like a, a like a mountain place where a lot of people get married. Apparently, so we're gonna mm-hmm. go up and take a look at that as soon as we can get that and finalize the date. Then yeah, everything's mm-hmm. it's on like Donkey Kong, baby. Yeah, but yeah, man, we should definitely get together and do that. That'll be fun. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking but, the only reason why, just to stay on this for a second two or more, I've not been to St. Louis, and I'm pretty sure we can get flights to St. Louis pretty easy. Yeah. Oh yeah, you guys would be welcome to come here, man. I got As the perfect. To, I got the perfect setup for it, man. I got this big ass gaming table, and yeah. Yeah, and then we could all use our our our, uh, our Cthulhu dice. Yeah, yeah, real dice. That would be awesome. Yes, yes. Would be more than awesome. Yeah, I'm which, I'm all in. Which ironically, find it. You know, I got you guys that those that dice, and um, look at what people got me for Christmas. This and two sets of those dice I got, and <laughs> I didn't ask for them. <laughs> Sweet, yeah, yeah cool. like the like the Cthulhu dice, the engraved yeah. ones and shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, those are super cool. I still collect dice, dude. I have so many, so many dice. Yeah, I've got a bucket of dice in storage right now. Yeah, it's like it's an, it's a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> the bucket of dice. I know, I know that bucket. Yeah, you do. Uh, and, I. And Got the, uh, All the figures two. still in there too. <laughs> no, that's that's a separate. Those are two separate fishing lure boxes that are full of lead figures. I still have my uh, the first twenty sided die I ever got. It's like be- before we even started gaming back in the day. We're probably talking like uh, I got the D and D. It's the D and D basic set. You know, oh, is it like the, uh, the like the light. Blue yes. Dice. Yeah, like real small. Does it still does it still have any edges on it, or is it no. just <laughs> is it a round no. circle? It just rolls. All <laughs> it's it just a round. Like, no, yeah. no it's corners. Like you, it's like you cast it out the airlock into space. It just keeps going. Yeah, I think that's the only one I still have from that set. But yeah, I still got it. Okay, sorry guys, I took us off track there, but no, it's all good. You guys are stalling. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I think the thing is, is like, um, I, I think, I think we, we probably just need to purchase a, a truck and, um, cause I mean, we well, can't, if we're just hijack one. barrels of, or just hijack one. Yeah. We could just hijack one, hijack one and then put a brick be on that the hard. gas pedal and put a stick and just. It's not like you guys are like law abiding as citizens, like pillars of the community or anything here. It wouldn't be the first truck that Alessia stole, I'm sure. Well, I mean, I think, I think yeah. that's or probably we could, what we need. Or we could just buy a, a flatbed and fill it full of gas and oil and charge a dynamite in the middle of it and drive it next to the place and. Well, I mean, I think if we if we if we like hijack a truck, there's no trail there, and then it's already filled with the fuel, and then you know we just can shoot at it when it gets through the front door, and ba boom. How much dynamite would the uh, put on the, the truck? Yeah, put that put that Lots. all like tape it all to the front of the the truck. So when it ignites, that ignites, and bang, you know, it's all up front. I'm in. We find a truck to hijack. Alessio, make it happen. Yeah, it would just be essentially going down to the, you know, the municipal, you know, buildings downtown where they keep all of the freaking trucks and just horking a truck. All right, Probably so, wouldn't be that hard. So Thursday, it's, it's Thursday night when they do their thing, right? Yeah, Tuesdays they have you got well you guys know that you know before at least on Tuesday nights they have meetings for prospective members where they kind of welcome prospective members non-members are admitted into the building on Tuesday nights. Thursday nights 
uh, late, late Thursday night or early Friday mornings, I guess, they have their initiation ceremonies up on the second floor uh, in the, uh, what's it called? It's the, remember when you guys went up the second floor and they have that room yeah. where they have all the candles and shit? It's the, uh, the lodge room, I guess they call it, where they have an altar and a little stage. The noble, noble philosopher's dais and all that shit. That's when they have their meetings late, late Thursday nights for their initiation ceremonies. All right. Well, I, I think we grab the truck. And actually, this, yeah, and actually, oh, hold on, hold on. and actually, that's probably when John Scott would be present. You know, because he oversees. He is the noble philosopher, so he would be overseeing these initiation ceremonies. Or at Before least we do it, did any, when you guys were there on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Thursday, yeah, stay, Thursdays. Thursday, that's that's when I got him. Mm -hmm. But before we do, before we hijack the truck, we need to make sure that we have our escape planned. So we want to look to see what uh, any way we can get across to Europe. Is there? Uh, I'm sure there's ships that come into Boston, right? Absolutely. Um, your best oh. bet is a, uh, it just takes a little looking into, there is a, uh, ship, it's a crack Atlantic liner called the Ceres, C-E-R-E-S, uh, that has a direct, uh, pat direct passage from Boston to, uh, Clyde, Scotland, uh, which is a short train ride from Inverness, which is a short drive uh, to Canage. So the crack Atlantic liner or the Cirrus or Cirrus, I guess you pronounce it. Um, of, of course, you you know, unless I, I'm sure you have a passport, eh, I guess Sparky would too, but oh, yeah. some of you guys might need to get a passport. The doctor might need to get a passport. Um, do they have luxury accommodations available? Yeah, of course. Well, um, yep. So we need to kind of time our attack and then our retreat. You know what I mean? Mm. Okay, well... Um, then how often does this ship, you know, just depart for Europe? Um, about every... Scotland. Yeah. It, could be, it could be London. Yeah, it's about every 12 days or so. Okay. Um, it, it's essentially like a six-day trip there. You know, you know the what, what day? And, and, the, and the liner runs, you know, back from London uh, to Boston. What day during the week are they departing? Usually, what's the day? Um, let's see. Right now, it's Thursday or Friday. Right, right now it's it's Sunday. Uh, we're looking. It's uh, Sunday, August tenth. Uh, the Cirrus is uh, scheduled to leave from Boston. Uh, to Clyde, Scotland, on Friday the fifteenth. Oh, how much oh more my. perfect could that be, dude? That's the, <laughs> that is el perfecto. And fun fact: August fourteenth is my birthday. So let's blow this place up on August fourteenth. Happy birthday <laughs> to me! One giant candle, yeah. and uh, then we we bolt out of town. We book passage on the ship, and okay. uh, we make sure everybody's passport situation is under. Control. Oh, and conveniently, I should point out that uh, during that week, or at least the you know the early part of the week, uh, Sparky, you think to you know contact Jacob Crown and Shield's team of lawyers uh, here in Boston, and you find out that on Wednesday, in fact, um, they are going to be doing proceedings uh, in front of a judge for the settlement of Jacob Crown and Shield's estate. Um, so you are due to receive your inheritance on August 13th. Perfect. Wow. Sure now, buying the tickets. Yeah, and just so you know, <clears throat> according to uh, Jacob's will, um, it consists of, doink, doink, doink. Just to give you an idea here, let me look. $198,000 in cash. 
they are they're liquidating um, all of Jacob's stocks, bonds, and so on and so forth. Hundred and ninety eight thousand dollars in cash. Um, his estate in uh, Marseille, France. Two automobiles, a Packard Twin Six. And uh, oh, actually, you guys have to pick up <laughs> already. Um, the yacht has already been. Uh, you've already got the title for the yacht. Um, unfortunately, a lot of his stuff was destroyed in the fire. Um, but the property uh, that the Crown and Shield Manor stood on there in Cambridge uh, is part of your inheritance as well. Um, also, a 400-acre farm and hunting lodge near Medicine Bow, Wyoming. Um, the 40-acre estate in the French Riviera. And $198,000 in cash. All right. So Which equates heard... to... You know, Isn't it usually it's, times five? Uh, it's times 12, or, roughly. Times 12. Oh, okay. Which equates to about two point three million dollars in today's money. So we got some spending cash, um, yeah. but I heard you say it one hundred and ninety-eight thousand three times. So I'm gonna multiply <laughs> that times three. Yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> uh, Sparky, not good with math. Anyways, all right. Well, that is awesome news. Um, and you'll also inherit his. Uh, you know, his banker for the Deutsche Bank, uh, David Lee Roth. David Lee Roth. Buzzes, buzzes, bop. The inheritance is yours. Yeah. So, uh, that, so you're due to, to get this all transferred to you on uh, Wednesday. Okay, you, perfect. You just, need to, you just need to show up and sign some paperwork and stuff. Mm, okay. Get, yeah, Jacob's There's, still going through the whole court thing too. It's still not. It's still kind of uncertain what's going to happen to him. But he is. Uh, he he he's lost it. He's gone. Issue. Okay, I don't really have a drive automobile skill. Um, I don't either. But we do know. Um, uh, was it uh, our drivers? in town yeah and just remember i mean you know anybody can really drive a car it's just if if you guys are going to be uh any kind of like chase situation or uh any kind of unusual driving conditions is when drive automobile to come and come and play so um unless you against the corner of the house <laughs> well yeah i mean it depends on how you guys want to work and i don't think you guys want to be in the truck when it explodes of course so you're gonna to have to kind of work that out no i mean i think it's um let's let's contact the one driver so he can drive us out of there basically what we're gonna do is um put a brick on the gas pedal mm -hmm. and just make sure that thing you know lines up straight to the house and just you know let it roll in there and then light a fuse the or we could light a fuse yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, you have like you have like you know ha as much dynamite as we can pack onto. That. I don't know how much dynamite Tom has, but as much dynamite as because we, we can't take dynamite with us on our trip overseas. So every stick of dynamite he has, man, pack on that thing and have a fuse. Maybe you know I don't know. I, like, actually, I don't think he has. I don't think he has very much. At least not enough to do this job. You guys are gonna have to get more dynamite. All have right. to buy some. Okay. Yeah, which is not a big deal. Okay. How, can we calculate if we if we look to see where the street is and the truck would be seconds do we estimate it would take for the truck to hit the house? Ten seconds, twenty seconds, thirty seconds? What's the probably about probably about twenty seconds, yeah. And as far as dynamite goes, I would imagine that, you know, a couple cases worth of dynamite would be sufficient. It's a pretty big house, so I mean you're gonna want just a couple bundles, you know. Three, okay. four bundles. Well, uh, um, like 56. Yeah. So I'm thinking anywhere between, you know, 40 and 50 sticks should light it up pretty good. All right. Well, okay. we, uh, of course, we probably, in, there's probably going to be some collateral damage in the neighborhood, but they probably yeah. have insurance. 
I mean, um, if you want to, if you want to total the lodge, you know, you're going to want a good amount of dynamite. Yeah, well, we do. I mean, total it. Yep. Does a hundred sticks out of control? <laughs> it's up to you, man. In my opinion, there's there's when you're dealing with stuff like this, I mean, just think That's all, all this. Just think, just think about this for a second. All of this started with this fucking lodge, right? So, in my opinion, two, like there's no such thing as overkill. Two hundred, two hundred. If we can get two hundred sticks, we get two hundred sticks. He goes from a hundred to two hundred, just like, just like that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, two hundred sticks of dynamite would uh would light up northern Boston. You know what I'm saying? So fire in the sky. Just. just Okay, well, uh, we obtained the dynamite. No problem. Okay. Um, and we'll, uh... Spark, you have quite the credit rating, so... You know, money's really no object. Alright. So we've got the dynamite, now we just need to get the truck. All right, so, Alessia, are you in charge of stealing the truck? Why don't, why don't we just um, grease some palms and have somebody walk, you know, like the security guard walk away? Really, it really it's a matter of either getting the keys to, to a truck or hot wiring it. Not worrying it would fall on would fall under locksmith, unfortunately, or mechanical repair, one of those two. Um, but bribing could work too, but that that would probably take a uh, or something like a fast talk or persuade, or credit rating, or some combination. Electrical repair would also work for hot wearing. Yeah, I mean, those are music. With either of those, I I really don't. I've got a. I mean, if, if it, we said fast uh, credit rating, I mean, you know, credit rating I'm or not, charm, I could probably not, get away with. So much money now. Why don't you just buy one? But that's right. It'd be traceable. That's right. Um. Could be, yeah, that could cause some unintended consequences. Yeah, the Dr. Van Helsing doesn't have anything like that either, really. A long locksmith, mechanical repair, nothing like that. I guess electrical repair isn't actually listed on the online online sheet, but oh yeah, it is. Electrical repair. <coughs> um, or I don't know if you thought of this, but you know, you're sort of you're really good at disguising yourself. You can just disguise yourself as an employee or something, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What okay, a yeah, I'll uh fabulous idea, Lesio. I'll take a look. I'll take a look at the uh the operation and look at their uniforms and mm -hmm. Yeah, probably, probably wouldn't take much. I mean you just have to steal a uniform. Um kind of thing. How's your how's your stealth? My stealth is great, man. It's seventy. All right, so we could take care of this with a with a good stealth check, um, and uh, followed up by a, a a good disguise check. How's that sound? So, in order to kind of you know sneak into the building, basically steal a uniform, and then get your hand on. Get your hands on a set of keys, you know, for a truck, without uh, attracting any undue attention. And uh, now, keep in mind too, these are roles that you can push or spend luck on as well. All right, so for the, ooh, okay, well that's good. You only missed it by six, so you could spend six luck luck points to to succeed at that. Or 
you can't do both. You could either spend six luck points to succeed at the stealth roll, or you can push the roll. The thing is, though, if you push the roll and roll again, um, if you fail, something really bad can happen. Points for that one. Yeah, and, and in a way, depending on the situation, as the keeper, when you fail pushed rolls, I should try to push the horror aspect of the game. So, not only could something bad happen, but something completely horrific could happen. So just da <laughs> da danger. It's dangerous trying to make these pushed rolls. But there could be consequences. Use the luck. Yes, very serious consequences for failed pushed rolls. Absolutely. And and just so you know, you know the way pushed rolls work. If you say, "Well, I want to push the roll," you know, I'm going to say to you, "Well, what are you doing in this situation to to push the roll?" You know, and you kind of tell me, give me an idea what you're doing, just for you know, sake of story or whatever. <clears throat> and then I'll try to give you some foreshadowing on what may happen if uh, if you fail the pushed roll. Or in this case, it might be best just to spend those six luck points. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sure, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I think, right. if, you know, from... That's my friend. From the heart of hell, I'm going to stick a dagger just the way Alicia would want it. Mm -hmm. With a giant yeah, need, truck uh, full of dynamite through the front door of their place. Roll the disguise now. Well, well, let's do a little narrative here, just very quickly. So you get in, so you get into the building, and uh, you know you're kind of milling about. You're trying to find out where they, where you know the locker room is, so you can go in there and, you know, hork a uniform uh, from a locker. You get into the locker room, and uh, one of the supervisors comes up to you, and he's like, "Can I help you, sir?" Kind of a thing. Um, and. It, you kind of luck out um, because the guy turns out to be Italian. Um, so you kind of strike up a conversation with them and give them some, you know, bullshit story like you're in here to, you know, say hi to your brother. You just got in from Italy and you're looking for your brother. He's like, oh, okay, okay. So you get in there and uh, you kind of get lucky in that respect that the guy's Italian. <laughs> um, so now what we're going to need once you get a, your hands on the uniform is you're going to have to uh, disguise yourself um, as a worker here in order to get your hand on some, on some keys for a truck. So make a disguise check. There you go. So check disguise. By the way, when you use when you use luck points for something to succeed, you don't get the check for it. Um, that goes for pushing as well. So you don't get the stealth check, but you do get the check for the disguise. All right, so Alessio, you get your hand on some keys, and uh, um, so you get you get your hands on a truck as well. So you walk out of the you know the service entrance in the back. You know, and there's guys coming in, you know, and they're like, hey, how you doing? You're like, hey, hey, um, and you get out in the parking, and you get out in the parking lot, you know, you, it's like, you know, you got a little key ring on there. It says truck 57. You know, so you find truck 57 it starts right up. Um, and you look at, you know, you're looking at the gauges and everything. It's got a full tank. And uh, you drive it right out of the lot. I feel like we should sing some, you know, "Luck Be a Lady Tonight" from Frank Sinatra, but it's <laughs> it's, it's it's not the right time period. Um, so this is happening on to... uh, this is happening on Thursday night, right? Yes. So so at this point, you guys have book passage um, on the Crack Atlantic Liner, Cirrus, and just yesterday, Sparky, you received your inheritance. So it's it's Thursday night or Thursday evening, or I don't know how. What time of day are you doing this? I, I guess we should have kind of determined that. Well, it's going to be. Really it's going to be. It's going to be when the uh, when the meeting when they're having their meeting. Right. It's Thursday night. Um, well, you guys know that they have these meetings at like two a.m. So. Yeah, so that's when we want to. 
that's when we want to drive the car through the front. Okay. So you're going to do the old brick on the, on the brake, on the gas pedal kind of thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. And a broomstick through the steering wheel to keep it straight. And 200 sticks yep. of dynamite. 200 uh, sticks of dynamite in a, a, a 25 second fuse. 30 seconds. Big, big, big tanker full of gas hitting that bitch. Awesome. This thing, this thing sets off and we're, we're gone in the car with our driver. Well, wait a minute. We never said anything. I know you guys said something about a driver, but we never said anything about well, getting we, a driver. We, we contact, uh, who is the, the driver that survived the bloody tongue? Bugsy that was, or? That was Bugsy Santelli, but, um, I don't think Bugsy's going to be working for you guys anymore. Um, just well, drive away cal calmly in our own car. As a matter of fact, I don't. That Bugsy was in New York. Oh. And uh, yeah. All right. Well. And to, um, to be honest with you, Bugsy's probably not even in New York anymore. He's he's flown the coop. Yeah. All right. Well. Um, I guess we'll just drive ourselves. Yeah. Let's keep it in the family here. Keep it in the family. So it, it it might be a two man job kind of thing. I mean, I don't, I don't know because you you have to light the fuses of the dynamite, right? Here, let me turn that off. You got to light the fuses of the dynamite and time it just right. So you're driving the truck through the front of the building, correct? That that's the yep. plan. Okay, and and how are you fastening the? Where's the dynamite in this whole thing? Because the the truck is like a tanker, you know, it's got a big tank on the back of it. It's got a big roomy cab. It's kind of like a king cab too. There are like seats behind the. There are, there are two rows of seats in the front of the the uh, cab. So, I, I suppose you could stack all the dynamite up in the cab. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put it in the shape of uh, two dynamite people. Okay. Okay. <laughs> dynamite people. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> I think that's what we're going to do. No, 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 no dynamite people. No. <laughs> Come on. Where's your creative flair, Alessio? All right. So you guys are going to be driving up the street and then you're going to kind of, you kind of slow down a little bit and you're like, okay, light it. Uh, so you light up the dynamite, get the brick, aim the truck at the lodge, which is, you know, maybe what, 50, 40, 50 yards away, something like that. Yep. Just aiming it straight at the thing, the, the lodge. And you get like a, you get like a nice, uh, you know, you tie down the steering wheel or something to keep it straight. Yeah, just, just put a broomstick through it. Yeah. Um, so you guys are standing, you know, as you're getting ready to do this, you're kind of standing there on Willow Street, you know, with a straight shot to the lodge. You can see there's about a dozen vehicles parked out in front. You can see shadows of people through the ground story windows. You know, there's a bunch of people in there. Um, and it's like two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> this is going to be great. All right. So you guys tell me what happens. All right, man. So um, we. Uh, oh, hold on one second. I'm sorry. Hold that thought. Hold on. So Lee, uh, I mean, Alessio, basically just put the brick down, put the broom in, light the fuse and stick it in a drive and let it roll. And then, and then walk to the car and drive away. Yeah. Walk to the car calmly. Yeah. So essentially, you guys, here's what I'm going to do here. Um, this, this is a well-planned event on your part. So I want you guys to tell me what happens. I mean, whether it's one of you or both of you or whatever, you, okay. tell, you tell me what happens. So I, I trust the, uh, I trust Alessio's lighting hands better than mine and my agility better on, uh, uh, so basically the cars and the uh, trucks and park. Alessio is very good under pressure, by the way. Yes, he is. Yeah. So, um, you know, the cars in park, um, I put the brick, you know, so the, the gun and the broomsticks in place, you know, and I look at Alessio, 
he looks at me and then um i'm like as soon as uh he nods his head i you know he lights it and i put it in park and we let it go and walk calmly to our car go ahead nice. tell us give us the picture kyle what happens all right so alessio looks at me we both grin at each other <laughs> he takes yeah. he takes his cigar he takes a cigar takes a big puff off it and takes the uh, embers and hits the fuse i jam it in park and that truck zooms off in <laughs> In a, in a, yeah, runs runs straight through the picket fence. You know they burst out of the way. Yeah, and there's the always there's all these cars sitting in front too. You know. Oh yeah, so I mean it, it goes through between two cars and you know bumps the bumpers out of the way. It's a massive truck, and then you know the most wondrous thing happens. So the stars are shining. You know, the night is clear. We can see it like kind of bump up into the yard and it catches enough air. So it goes up the front steps and jams <laughs> right into the lobby. Bam. Yep. And around that time, you know, um, you, you know, we flash forward to the inside of the truck and you see it just, you know, go to the, uh, the dynamite people. <laughs> That Alessio didn't want me to build, but I built anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it lights and it's like, shh, and then you see the, the, the oil of the truck go. Yeah. All of it goes, you know. <laughs> oh, I need to find a better explosion than that. There. All right. So, so it explodes and the night lights up. And there's secondary explosions going off and the house is just as engulfed in flames and there's like shit flying up in the sky. You guys, you guys are, uh, imagine at this point, just kind of like jogging down the street, looking over your shoulder at this. Um, and there's shit like landing in yards around you, you know, <laughs> fucking, you know, big pieces of flaming wood. And, you know, you see a, 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 car, a wheel of a car go rolling past you down the, down the street. Um, and there's flames like 10 stories, you know, high in the sky <laughs> and the whole, the entire lodge is on fire. Wow. That's some, that's, some, that's some, that's some major, down to the cellar. that's, that's some major mayhem, uh, Alessio, like our first, our first outing together, Marshall and Alessio murder somebody at a muffin shop <laughs> yeah and, and then take 200 sticks of dynamite after winning the sweepstakes baby you know and uh you know 10 story flames yeah and... get the truck yep um so you know we we drive away calmly and uh we, we collect their stuff and we go to the ship. Yeah. Um, Sparky, um, you gain 1d4 plus 1 sanity points. All right. Let's see here, Marshall. And Lee, since Celestio really hasn't been involved in this yet, I'm not going to give it to him. But Sparky, you gain 1d4 plus 1. So just roll 1d4 plus 1. Um, and upon hearing uh -huh. of this, Van Helsing will also gain that. Uh, I'll give it to you too, Lee. Go ahead and roll 1d4 plus 1. And gain that many sanity points. Oh, man, I couldn't have rolled worse. Nah, that's I'll all take right. it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let's see here. Let's see, where are you, sanity? Yay, 49. I'm almost at a uh, cool 50. All right, Alessio, you gained five sanity. That felt good. <laughs> that's awesome. Mission, right? What's that? That's part of my main mission was to get back at these guys for what they're doing to my my friends' people. Oh yeah. So you, know? you, you, have, you have more sanity now than you started with, or you should. That's awesome. And uh, what I think, Sparky, um, that brings you up to what three short of what you started with, something like that. Or no, you have more than you. Well, um, 
and you started with yeah, uh, no. 40. I mean, I... Wait, why is you? Oh, you lost. Oh, you lost five PowerPoints <clears throat> from the Mr. Black meeting. Yeah, you, was... you had started with 50. So, chanting, so yeah, you... chanting to channel things from the future with Nerlothotep is bad. No. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you guys. There's what. A, uh, yeah, go ahead. There's a uh, if there's a clipping or something later on, you know, in, in the paper, you should send it to Jacob. <laughs> yeah, he gets to see it. Definitely. Um, I'm going to give you guys another D4 sanity points. Boo. Um, because you're a. Just under the assumption, you can pretty safely assume um, that John Scott was most the definitely force. in the building uh, when this went on. So I'm going to give you another D4. Hooray! And uh, I need to make a note here, too, so Tom can... Tom, uh, let's see, Van Helsing, upon hearing of the good news, he will gain 2D4 plus 1. Hopefully he hasn't um, read himself into insanity. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely going to be taking some sanity points for that. The uh, seventh edition is is a little is even worse, really, than the old ones because you take the same amount of sanity points generally from skimming the book as you do reading the whole thing. Whereas before you would take about, you know, half of what you would normally take for skimming it. And then you take the remainder for actually reading it. But from now on, you basically are going to be taking two sanity hits for skimming it. And if you eventually read it, you'll have to lose sanity again. So, so all right, that was cool. I was kind of waiting for that. Let's see. I'm super happy. That's like. He's impressed with Sparky, totally. There we go. I just I posted that on uh, Order the Silver, Silver Twilight Lodge in Boston. Boo! <laughs> All right. Excellent. Take that, you scum suckers. Sorry, <laughs> Mary Lou. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you don't you don't know that she was necessarily in there. I mean, if you did know that she was in there when you did that, I mean, I, I might make you lose sanity, but you don't know that. Yeah, you're pretty, you're pretty damn sure that John Scott was in there, though. Probably overseeing, you know, doing his uh, grand philosopher duties for the new recruits. Um, and you I mean you can probably assume that you know maybe too. maybe Max Reed and the others were in there too, but who knows. But well, for, yeah, all, but for all intents and purposes, we'll mark John Scott with a big X. Well, I'm sorry. What did you say? For all intents and purposes, we will mark John Scott with a big X. Oh, man. I, I, I'm just worried that he comes back and we take sanity when he comes back. <laughs> well, if he did die, I mean, they'd have to find all of his pieces to bring him back. The nice thing about that particular attack, you know, the the dynamite and the and the gas yeah the fuel oil yeah the, the lodge is gone at least the upper parts of it good job fellas that's payback for crown and shield manor right there man mm -hmm. burn baby burn i know this is an explosive part of town <laughs> Very good. Crown and Shield Manor goes down. Fires are everywhere. Uh, it's going to be a good, uh, a good sales uh, device for uh, home insurance salesmen in the area. Oh yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to uh, see what comes out in the paper. All right, so we'll uh, we'll end the session. I'm going to take you guys over here. Here's the next chapter coming up. The Coven of Canich. Um, I've got, Look at that, man. And uh, I've got some, you know, some relevant handouts on the page here for you guys to take a look at stuff you found so far, as well as a map a little bit further down of the Scottish Highlands. 
If it's not Scottish, it's crap. <laughs> so this this will be a uh, so essentially we've gone through uh, you know two chapters of the campaign here. Moving wow. Into the, moving into the third. And uh, this will be this will be a good one. This one will be fun. I mean, and and again, and, and, a, and again, uh, in the ban in the banner up here, there's you know there's some clues, a little foreshadowing per se. You've got some you know humanoid figures dancing in the moonlight around the snakes, some, man. Around some stones, and then you've got some snakeage, you know. In a, in a black so orb. Yeah, I think that's like the moon kind of a thing, but. Um. Yeah, man. Uh. Wow. Awesome. Awesome gaming and uh, all. At uh, your at the end of your hard work, Sean. Thanks, man. No, you're welcome, dude. I, I enjoy the I enjoy Did the you... shit out of this so. I mean, I, I really like I really like you know roll twenty. I, I enjoy just coming on here and just kind of putting shit together and playing around with it and stuff. And you know, before we all hooked up, I had been doing this for a number of years, and I've kind of figured everything out and how to uh, how to make things work in here. But uh, yeah, that's obvious. Tell. Yeah, exactly. Tell me. But yeah, this next chapter is gonna be really really fun. It's gonna be a challenge though. Um, maybe even more so than anything you guys have come up against yet. Things are going to start intensifying very quickly. Uh, there will be some oppor some some great opportunity for some role playing in this particular chapter. Because um, just to give you an idea, I believe in this chapter I've got about twenty something NPCs at my disposal. Um. You know, pretty much it's the way they wrote it. It's really cool. I mean, pretty much everybody in the freaking town of Canich uh, is involved in some way or another. So, I mean, I've kind of got my work cut out for me here, but it's going to be a lot of fun as far as role playing and sleuthing. And the, I mean, I'll kind of give you an idea here of what to expect. Um, it, it says in the book here, I thought it was kind of cool. It says, uh, let me find it real quick and I'll let you guys go. It says, uh, where is it? <coughs> oh, fuck it. I don't know. It says something in here like, that this scenario should run like a like a good um, like a good horror movie kind of a thing where you guys are you know in the highlands of Scotland um, you know in this strange sort of it's a village is what it is uh, it's kind of a very old fashioned you know ancient village up in the highlands of Scotland so there's going to be you know fog and bumps in the night and Ghostly, yeah, ghostly apparitions and stories of werewolves out in the forests, you know, and all and all this, uh, you know, all these superstitious Scotsmen are out there, you know, be telling you all different kinds of weird shit going on. Um, but it's gonna be fun. I've been looking forward to this one. Um, and and really, I mean, you guys don't still don't have many clues as to as to what the order is doing here in Scotland. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this unfolds. There's going to be some aha moments in this one, you know? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So, yeah, until next time. All right, thank man. you. Thank you. It's, it's always a pleasure. Hopefully Tommy can make it next week. And uh, I'm sure Alex will get involved here once he gets uh, gets kicking with this new job. Things yeah, kind of. I said hello. We said hello. Um, anyway. I will do that. All right. We'll see you next week, guys. Later, guys. Take care. Later. Good night. Yeah. Good night. <laughs>